this week on Greenfield's Finest Podcast. I guess you guys are doing highbrow comedy now. <laughs> with like uh, Bart Huffin. Like, I found Did myself. You listen? I listened today. Mike told me he blamed it all on you. And then as I listened, <laughs> like, yeah. like, I'm like, Mike was like the ringleader. Uh, kids at Deer Creek School in Oklahoma were sucking toes at school fundraiser. We had a 99-year-old man divorce his 96-year-old wife after 77 years of marriage because she had an affair in the 1940s. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Greenfield's Finest Podcast, brought to you by the Spearmint Rhino. With me, as always, the boys in the building. We've got my main man, Johnny Rosado, back from vacay. What up, John? What's up? We got old Big Dick Moneyline Welsh, my co-host. What up, man? What's going on? <laughs> Not much. What's up, Speed Racer? <laughs> Listen, this isn't going to be like a fucking... That was like... the, the Literally, the, I got thrown in the worst fucking idiot situation of all time. Like, it, it, it was just fucking horrible. Like, it, dude, in my defense, I stopped so far ahead of this fucking... Like, to get ahead of it. My airbag didn't come out. I had a seatbelt. Like, this fucking dude, it just... It was just a fucked slippy up situation. Slippy out there. No, it, was, it wasn't even slippy. Oh, it wasn't raining yet? No. Oh, this fuck. This happened before it was raining. Oh, so You're man. just plowing into people you're and just driving. just crushing road. people. No, dude, Texting come on. and driving. Dude, I, I never fucking, I don't talk on the phone and drive. I don't text and drive. <sighs> I don't do that shit, dude. Everybody okay, though? Yeah, the dude's fine. I mean, it, like, I didn't, you know what I mean? It, it, like, I made sure he was all right. We talked. He's cool. You know what I mean? What's the matter? You couldn't do a good old-fashioned hit and run? Yeah, yeah I, could, yeah, I probably could have. <laughs> I, I think my, my man's little, I think he might have been blazed up, so I don't know how excited this dude is about. 5 come? No. No. We, we, I, I almost kind of wish they would have known, like, drug tested both of us and be like, hey, <laughs> hey look at this hey. guy. Hey. You, you hit a skunk you smell, pal. Yeah. <laughs> you smell that? Yeah. It smells like reefer, officer. He was like, because the dude was like, man, he, he was like, I'm going to lose my job. Is that like, what he said? Yeah. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, it's like the third time this happened. Uh, sweet. So, like, <laughs> he, he, it was a work truck, I'm assuming, then? Yeah, he had a work van. Oh, okay. What kind of company was that? I tried to see. I drove by Mike. I got a picture of I it. See, I drove by him, and I'm like, looking. I see Z-Bird out there in his Waterboy jersey, like, talking to the dude. I'm like, uh that's like a that's that spot there is like notorious, like to go on the boulevard, the allies. Yeah. People are like cutting people off left yeah, and right. People don't know. People don't know where when it's coming, and they fucking well, they, they try to, to skip they everybody. Wanna, yeah, they want to sneak in. Everybody's there. skipping. Were yeah. you skipping? Fuck, dude, bro. You I anticipate in, that anticipation. I stay, and I, dude, I was like sitting there just driving. The fucking guy got cut off, and then he fucking slammed on the brakes, and I slammed on the brakes, and it was like. You know, there wasn't enough room between us, I guess. Did you say, oh, come on, man? Well, I was like, I got out right away because I had my, you know, I had my safety belt on. And I was like, dude, I wanted to make sure to do, I was like, dude, you okay? Dude, it's like, yeah, he's like, dude, that was fucking crazy. See, I thought that guy would have fucking pulled over too because I think I nicked him. You know what I mean? Nah, you get a little nick and you cause the three-car power if you right. keep on moving. Yeah, right? yeah, you keep it moving. I remember I had a, the Honda Accord that I had for like 20 years. We were uh, coming up, you know where like Churchill Country Club is? Uh-huh. We were coming up the road. I was coming back from work, and like there was traffic at the top of that hill, and two just <laughs> ran in the back of me like hard as hell. We need. I, I didn't even get out. I was like, "We're good, man." Like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, we're, I, I don't think I had a license at the time. I think I was driving on a suspended. <laughs> so like, yeah. I didn't say, yeah, we're good, buddy. He was like, "We're good." I was like, "We're good." He was like, "You sure?" I was like, "Good. Mm -hmm. We're good. Let's get the fuck out of here." Like, fucking time to go, dude. I've had people like back into the like the dump truck like the steel part of the dump truck and yeah. totally rat fuck their car right and they're like i'm like i mean you nicked the paint a little bit but yeah, dude, we can keep it moving we're good dude <laughs> i mean like <laughs> i just i just tore up your whole hood yeah <laughs> like, like, even just being parked i seen somebody like come out of their driveway and just like like blast like the side of the steel and you're just like <laughs> well, i looked at it, like you know you like rub it a little yeah. bit and you're yeah. just like yeah. you got the worst of this yeah, one right like yeah uh, how was Florida? The Florida boys are back in the building. I thought no Sholey though. Yeah, he, it was it was good. Like no I said, call, no showed. Yeah, well, he said you got him down there working. Like <laughs> it's time to work. It's crunch time down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's crunch time down there in Jack Lawrenceville. Jack said sacrifices need to be made. Yeah, like someone got a podcast. Someone got to pour concrete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to pour concrete, so fucking he's up. No, nah, it was nice. Went down there with the family. The girls like the weather was perfect. I couldn't have picked a better week. You know what I mean. It's, that's it. Got, yeah. a, got a solid tan, ate, slept a lot, drank a little bit. 
Surely got his fangs into me uh, before I went. Before you went, yeah, yeah, he was saying that, dude. That, that I, I love how uh, what a stupid decision. Were you dying on the in the airport, dude? All of a sudden, J- Johanna's like, "Yeah, Rose and the girls, Surely's coming over too." I'm like, "You know, we got to go to the airport tonight at like two a.m. Like yeah. leave at like three. Yeah, Be- oh, damn, dude." Yeah, I didn't think it was, yeah, yeah, the yeah. flight left at like six. Yeah. So yeah. like Shuli comes over and acts like, you know, he's I'm like, <laughs> You want a beer? He's like, You want to eat whiskey? I'm like, Yeah. I'm like, I knew I knew yeah. what time he was like, coming over. Is, huh? You're going on vacation, he's coming over. Yeah. Well, right. You like, know dude, like happening. what right. Well, yeah, I just embraced it. Really, like, it really wasn't that bad. The flight was like a little iffy. I, like I like Did you have an in flight drink? No. no, dude, the inflate drink people like aren't that like accessible. Really? No, they're really not. They're really not. Like you no. kind of got to hound them, and I really wasn't looking to hound anybody. I'm sitting yeah. next to like six a.m. Yeah, like the like I caught a weird dude behind me, kept kicking the back of my heels, but like I was still like a little bit drunk. Wait, I, he was touching your heels with the top of his feet, the back of it, like the, the front of his feet, like uh, we're coming under the seat. Oh, I'm just like, what are you doing? Keep your toes to yourself, cause what are you doing? You know what I mean? It was nice family time. You know, you come back, you think you have friends. And then Mike tells you to listen to the podcast. How, how are the forts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any good and vacation sudden, forts? Like, I guess you guys are doing highbrow comedy now. <laughs> with like, uh, fart huffing. Like, I found Did myself. Did you listen? I listened today. Mike told me he blamed it all on you. And then as I listened, <laughs> like, yeah. like, I'm like, Mike was like the ringleader. You brought yeah. it up. I think I already started it. You started then, the fire. Yeah. And then Mike like stoked the flames. <laughs> he even surely like yeah, was poured some black ass yeah, on it. Yeah, I'm like. We I were found, having a good time with I, it. I, I heard it sounded like it. There was a point. <laughs> I looked over and like all four of us were like cracking dude, up. Dude, I heard eagle tits yeah, in the back. Eagle tits loved like it, dude. Fucking girl. Yeah, he loved it. He couldn't get enough of it. Dude, so I'm like, listen, at first, I'm like, these dudes are so fucking stupid. It went on for a while. <laughs> yeah, it kept getting brought back up. And then at one point I was laughing, and then I found like one point, like I wanted to jump in too. Yeah, you wanted yeah. like, yeah. Like, yeah, fucking like, what's he cutting farts? You know what I mean? Like, you're like okay, you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah, cutting right. farts. Yeah, like, I was like yeah. thinking of shit. I'm like, wait a minute. So talk about me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how did it become the, the fart huffer? But yeah, it'd been nice if like we this was this week and surely was the fart huffer. We, we were low. Yeah. On, we were low on material. Yeah. That was over. the funniest part of the podcast. <laughs> By far. Farts. It saved the whole show. Yeah. You guys are getting it's, serious a little bit. Why are we, what were we talking about? I don't know. Transgender sports got brought yeah, up. Yeah, uh, Z-Bird <laughs> one. Uh, Z-Bird hates transgenders. No, I don't. Yeah. No, I, dude, dude, he, dude, let's, so get, the, let's just make a public statement that you hate transgenders. No, you, you're the only dude. You're the, like, you pretend to be this woke liberal dude. And I, we know dude, deep down who you are, Jack. I don't, don't want to pretend know, to be a woke liberal. I know liberal. where you fucking He dates like up. a chick like 12 years younger, so and you got to be like in He's that. like, you know, babe, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. All I said was... I I was like, dude, I don't think the yeah, transgender wanna... men should be able to play sp- competitive sports with women. Yeah, we all agreed. Yeah, but then you just said I hate transgenders. Like, <laughs> Ooh, clip that, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I never said. Yeah, I heard you dudes on DVE. That was good. I think yeah, Simple Jack well. is here to stay. Yeah. People are <laughs> asking me, like, dude, I dude, just love it. I threw him a fucking softball. You on threw that it up one. and he hit it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, but like, and now you got a new nickname. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Simple Jack, I mean, it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I I gave him a lot for him to turn on that, and he fuck he did. It was perfect. It, it worked out. But uh, yeah, DV went well. We got any new listeners? Yeah, we uh, yeah, welcome all the listeners from WDV. We did get a nice jump on our streams, and actually, like our YouTube did better than average. I'm not sure which direction they're coming from, but if you're coming from DV this week, welcome aboard. You're in for a fun ride. We're here every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., and we got a catalog of about 214 episodes, so you can keep going back if you're looking for more to listen to. Uh, R.I.P. Virgil. Zebra, that was your boy, wasn't it? Yeah, dude. So I'd re- Virgil's a, a wrestler from back in the day. Uh, he was a million he's dollar man's like from he was like Pittsburgh, this, yeah, right? yes. He was like a million dollar man's like what boy like side so he like, was like a, tag team partner. He was a, he would carry the money. He would carry the money thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he would say like like it was the million dollar man and Virgil had the suitcase with a million dollars in it. Were Virgil and the Repo Man the same guy? Or the, the Repo Man was white, huh? Yeah, Dude, yeah. 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 But All right, very yeah. limited so, knowledge of so, wrestling like, on my part. And then like Virgil, like it was crazy because like. I seen all these like wrestlers come out like man like I'm like you know like they were like empathetic and like dude and I'm sure they did have great experience with him, but, like dude every time I seen him he was at the flea market taking pictures for twelve dollars like where were you dudes at then? Well, I don't know if like a lot of old wrestlers are like doing that great. I to I be see- out there saving 
other old wrestlers. Yeah, that is probably, I'd say, the one career from them dudes being at their high point in their 80s to take away your macho man, or not macho, your... um, Like The Rock. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hulk Hogan. Hogan. Ric Flair. Stone Cold. Ric Flair. Ric Flair's like... Well, he's old now, and he's been drinking for 100 years. He's been grinding forever. He could never retire. He should look like that. Those dudes really can't retire. And, And that's the thing, like... Dude, besides that, like the rest of them dudes are in like bad, bad shape. I know the one dude, uh, Mankind, he tours and like it's almost, it's not, it, he does like the improv does stuff like that. It's like comedy shows, but he tells like stories from wrestling. Like I went to one. He probably gets a good following with that. I would imagine. D- dude, it was sold out. Yeah, and it was it was a weekday night. They gave him the night. He came down. Uh, what's his name? Matt Light. Like like open for him. Did a couple minutes. But then he comes out and tells wrestling stories. And then there's a Q and A, and it was fucking sold out. And like, Those wrestling docs on A and E are awesome. Dude, they're unbelievable. Yeah, they're good. Uh, I watched a couple this weekend. I pretty much moved my whole house this weekend. Did but you? Like, didn't didn't move. What do you mean you rearranged? Rearranged rooms, dude. Put my room out in the addition. Baby's room downstairs. Laney's get ready room back upstairs. And like, do you sleep on the first floor? Now we do. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We we yeah yes. But that the baby's down on the first right. floor too now. You'll uh, do that like twenty more times. Oh, uh, bro! I like we are. We just did it before he like before the baby, and now we're just doing it again. And I'm like, this is here we go, here we go. But you know, it worked out better. But you say your room? Do you, do you mean like you're at like your man cave? Gone. My man cave's gone. Uh, it is <laughs> toast. What is that? Like a toy room now, or? No, uh, it's a bedroom. Uh, Turned into a bedroom. Got him. Yeah, it's uh. There's a lot of moving to not really move, but, you know, we got it done. It took about a whole Saturday, a little bit into Sunday. Uh, but, yeah, it's done. Zebra, what you get into this weekend? Anything? Let me think. Let me think. Tell any no. funny jokes anywhere? No. Actually, this weekend, I had the weekend off. This week, I got a, I got a uh, show coming up Thursday, Saturday, and then, obviously, April 5th, got the um, Up at Square Hill Sports Bar. We got that big show. Tickets available on Eventbrite. And then March 30th, Spearmint Rhino. Another cage rage. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cunts everywhere. There you go. Cunts <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Call you to get in, right? Uh, if, speak- if you want to get in, let me know. Speaking of cunts, Deontay Johnson is demanding a trade. Did he, is he demanding now? He said he's... Get him out of here. Get him out. See you later, buddy. Get him, get him out. See you later. Dude, he, he's, a, he's a cancer. Yeah. Locker yep. room cancer. Yeah, like you were... Yeah, you were... Ball. Yeah. You just bitch all Ball season dropper. long. You're dropping balls. You run backwards. Take we'll take a second round for, second rounder for you. All out day. the door, dude. Yeah, great route runner. Take yep. him. Have and him. That, now, the weird... Go now, to the Redskins. It, there's just so much bullshit online, but like they were saying... Allegedly, well, not like I seen on this one that the Bears were trying to work out a trade to get Deontay Johnson and a second round pick for Justin Fields, and I'm like, that's too much. You could you could have them both. Just yeah. give us like some draft picks. Yeah, we got to get a draft. Let's we got to get, get some, like a third or something. Draft, like four, that. Four, I, I get, probably a fourth. Me and talk, dude, wide receiver is the most. Uh, you it's, get it. it's easy. It's the most replaceable position. You get it because you could get like you could get a young dude and you could fucking put him in there, or you, there's all there's always veterans right. around too. But young speed. Yeah, young speed. Yeah, he's nothing special. He bitches all the time. He drops the ball. He, he runs backwards. He, yeah. See you later, buddy. No. Like, dude, he turned into like AB, except without being as good as AB. Like, no, not even ne- nearly close. Yeah. Right, not even close. Like, not even close. AB was uh, arguably one of the best right, receivers right. ever. It, I don't think he chirped that during, much during his peak. He he was, he was yeah. yeah he I was one. He, of, but I'm I saying think, like he's one of the best receivers of oh, all time. Yeah. He caught everything. Yeah. yeah, if you catch everything, you can talk some shit. And dog, his, whatever you want. And his, he took he took a little his far. Tw- his Twitter's lit. dude. He's like C-T-E-S-P-N. laying in the ESPN. <laughs> dude, he must have found out what Barstool is because he's just calling Barstool's cr- Barstool people crackers all day on the <laughs> internet right now. It's great. So look at all these crackers, and then they have like one black dude that works there and like one. Uh, Little guy that works there too, like a midget, and he's like, "Sorry, there's one and a half black people." Like, <laughs> the, the midget dude retweeted, "I'm like, what the fuck's going on, dude? Leave me the fuck alone." <laughs> but yeah, he's on Barstool hard right now, just crackering everybody. He'll like, be on there soon. Yeah, but the thing is, like, so Cameron and Mace tried to have him on. They were trying to going to try to do like a segment with him. 
He's horrible on the mic. I, he I got, is I heard about so it. bad. So it's just like you think you're getting like some gold because like his Twitter's so bad, but it's like funny. And then he gets on the mic and he just he's an idiot. Yeah, he don't make any fucking sense. So like you can't. Right, Twitter's can't, his sweet spot. Yes. Yep. For sure. Yeah, and, he doesn't like enunciate or talk or he kind of just, just yeah he kind of drifts around, drifts around and just like drags out his words and not nothing has a fucking point. Uh so, yeah, he's not great on the mic. This isn't easy, dude. Not everybody can do this, Z-Bird. You know what I mean? Did you no. see he was killing Caitlin Clark? <laughs> I think I might have missed that. Dude, he was like, <laughs> he was just basically calling her ugly, which is kind of fucking mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is mean. You know what I mean? He's just ruthless. Dude. Yeah, I mean, the Chick Hoopers, they're not, not even really breaking the doors down in the looks department. They, uh, watch, well, she's about to break the record. For she it. broke it. Yeah, she for, broke it. Okay, so then they were, like, saying, now she's the highest scoring collegiate athlete and they're like, like ever i think yeah and like a lot of people were coming out and say well, you're saying what about pistol pete and they're like she beat his record and they're like yeah but like what if she played in like them i'm like you can't compare that you know what i mean like she if she scored the most points you got to give it to her yeah absolutely but i mean if you're comparing men's women's basketball men's women's basketball and, right in women's it's obviously different but like yeah she scored the most points in college history she's the she, she has the scoring record. Right. Nobody's going to say she's better than Pistol Pete. Right. Yeah, they, yeah, they're right. just, people just she's like to unbelievable. Argue. Yeah, yeah, people just like to argue yeah. about stupid right. shit. It don't I, matter. I do, I, I'll tell you what. I would be surprised, like, with all the money she's making, all the stuff she's doing, there's not really a ton of money in the WNBA if she kind of, like, goes and not off of basketball but gets into, like, another – some realm of basketball besides playing the WNBA because I don't think what other really, league is there? I mean, there's like women pay, women overseas, but I would imagine like I don't think they pay that. I, they don't pay them shit over there because right, right, yeah. The, I mean, what's her name went over to play and got arrested. She'll go to the WNBA make like I don't know what ma- a max is there. What make whatever the max or she'll kill it in right. They're, they're probably I'm sure they're like hoping that. that she changes that like because people watch her at Iowa. Yeah, dude, watch I mean, her she sells out Iowa. Yeah. Iowa's jam packed. Dude, but her, there ain't too much going on in Iowa. And, and well, uh, another yeah. thing is like, as far as like trading cards go, her cards are worth like an insane amount of money. If you get like a Caitlin you Clark have auto, autograph, no, but you got to buy this like special brand like Bowman Chrome Draft, and like it's like all the college players. But you can get Caitlin Clark autos, and like they're selling for like twelve hundred bucks. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> Simple Jack. <laughs> I love when Zebra goes in the card talk and he gets all into it. I don't know what you want back from us, Zebra. We're not card guys, dude. Yeah, yeah I know. You, can, you might have to start a card, like a card podcast or something like that, where you just card out with your card boys and just talk cards all day. Dude, believe me, I I, I already watched like three of them. You know? Do they have them? I'm sure they do. Oh yeah, the best. The there's one where that covers the beefs in the in the industry. There's, That's the best one. The card beefs. There's card beefs. Dude, Have you ever found yourself in a card beef? No, uh, with like a customer. Yeah, like a little one. I'm talking like industry beefs. So it'll be like, this guy's a fucking. They call, they like made a rap song about this dude because they were calling him the PPP man because they said he started a PPP loan when he was a millionaire and started a fake card company. So they were like made up a rap and shredded him and he sued him back and like that was like pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean that sounds a little interesting. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there it you was. Go. If you're into it, uh, did you uh, <laughs> did you guys watch the combine at all? Barely. Me too. It seems like it seems like the combine's lost some steam. Well, dudes aren't doing it. Right. Uh, the dude broke the record. Yeah, the kid. Uh, what's his name? Ross. Josh Ross from Washington ran a four two two. That's flying. The, the, the best is like us trying to pretend like we know what the hell we're looking at. Like that fast lineman. Did you see that lineman was huge? No, nah, I missed. I did. I barely seen it. I was moving. I see. I, I, see, I just seen like game. highlights of it. Yeah. That, I mean, that dude was fucking flying. That's John dude, Ross. Yeah, That's yeah. not even a dude. Is that, no, is he, that, he had the record. Did, did uh, his brother or something, Justin? Was there another Ross that had a, the record before? Nah, this is just, From, that dude. I think played at Miami, or he went to Washington, and then he, no, I have no idea. The du- no, there was a dude that played for the Bengals. I thought that had the record. And they retired, and then he came back and tried to play for the Chiefs this year. And the Chiefs were like, he did like a little bit of working on it, and just fucking was like, no, nah, I can't do it. His name was Justin Ross. I'm positive he had the record yeah, before. His probably his brother or something like that. That's unbelievable. Four two is fucking Flying. insane. I feel like when dudes are like this fast, like you hear about them in combines, and it never really translates. No, well, right. So they were saying like game speed. So I, I was on a Twitter a little bit doing a little research when oh, I was yeah. away. What they say? 
nothing they said sometimes like game speed doesn't like transfer like you can be able to burn it from like in a straight line but you know the cutting and of cutting you know and the pads yeah. and the contact they and were all showing that. like the one wide receiver from georgia the white dude they were, like he got tremendous game speed and they showed him in the game and he he didn't look that fast <laughs> but like he did <laughs> break away it? bauer the well, tight end big ne- big ass white dude well, his, his last name was something else. He was a wide yeah. receiver. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but then there was like this lineman that was like six five, like three twenty. Ran. Well, those he ran boys under, can move. He ran under five flat. Imagine that dude running at you like a he, fucking freight truck. Scary. Pulling, pulling yeah, guard. No thank you. Crack your coconut. Uh, Caleb Williams didn't throw. I'm not. If I'm the Bears, <laughs> I get every pick I can for for my number one spot. I would if I would want nothing to do with Caleb Williams. Dude, his dad's talking crazy. His dad's he talking doesn't crazy. have an agent. He doesn't want to throw. He he just. Why wouldn't you want to throw? Who he cares? doesn't. Because he do- he once paid to participate in everything and like. Oh, uh, he wants paid to he, throw. Dude, he's, he's trying to like not take a rookie deal. Yeah, and he already signed. He already um like. For sports cards, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me, but he's already signed an exclusive deal. He's not autographing cards next year, which is crazy. Like rookie cards, like people are like, "What do you mean you're not going to?" But other people started doing it before him. But it's like he don't want nothing to do with nothing, dude. I, I dude, if I was them, you could. Tr- if someone really wants him, trade back a couple spots and get one of them other dudes. Get a couple picks. Yeah, I don't even know if he like. I would hang on the fields. Hodge hates him. Hodge hates him. Hates him. Who and, Hodge, Hodge, and he fucking knows. He know. I mean, Hodge is. He he was. He's been wrong. He was too. the first one on Manziel that was like, this dude this, is going to be out of the league. That's in why two he's years. so he was right. so right about Manziel that like you just think Hodge knows everything. He's been there. Was, I seen something where like where Hodge, there was like a clip Hodge being very wrong about like very good right. players and but like I mean that's the name of the game. But I'm on. I'm with Haji on this one, dude. I I'm, I don't like it. Well, if to, I was the Bears, I would fucking dude. It's so much to lose that first round, and yeah, but you're. I mean, you're, gonna, you're to not going to lose the first round. You're going to get somebody's one, right? And then you're going to get like a, maybe another one and some twos. Like you're going to get a like if dick you, load of shit. If you would trade back, like say hypothetically, <laughs> you would trade back to five, <laughs> and then you would get like a like the first round pick, the or the uh, fifth pick in the first round. Fifth pick in the second round, fifth pick in the third round. Someone would trade that to get Caleb Williams. Yeah, for he, sure. He I don't, think you get more than that. He just seems like such a pain in the ass without throwing one ball in the NFL. And right. That's what he and he was. Like, I played over thirty games. Like I, you just watched me there. Seems a little sweet. I don't know. I he's, I don't know if it's just California or what, but like played at Oklahoma. I don't know. I don't like him at all. I don't. I, do, I would not. I wouldn't take him. But not what the pay, fuck do I know? They're not paying him to be at the combine. That's exactly why he didn't fucking go. Because I'm telling you, yeah, that's I mean, what he's all about. He's, he's, there's a lot of dudes that like don't throw at the combine. It's just the shit leading up to it. Him crying like that after they lost that game. Crying in his mom's arms. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then yeah. like I want a piece of a franchise. Like this. Yeah. I don't know if that was ever true, but right. now, th- leading up to this, like it kind of seems like they th- that was out there and they probably pulled it back some. I don't know. Right. His dad well, it's too. not even legal. Yeah. No, no, no. no you can't no. even do yeah, it. That makes it's perfect a- sense. Because they said they nixed that on Aaron Rodgers. I'll tell you what, that's. So you could show me one good highlight from the combine. I'm like, that dude from Tennessee might have threw like a 70 yard pass on the button. I'm like, Steelers should draft, draft him. Draft him, dude. I'll tell you who didn't have a good tra- who didn't have a good combine. Who maybe he shouldn't have threw was fucking McCarthy from Michigan. Yeah, I mean he handed the ball off fucking his whole career. I, I get it, but dude, he was fucking. Uh, he was overthrowing everything. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, we're rough. talking about 15 yard down and outs, and they're just like. Like these receivers are just like breaking. Yeah, I didn't really see the like, balls behind. I'm like, whoa, what the, dude! Like what they really thought he was going in like the first round. Well, they start. You know how it is. Like, yeah, they they're, they have like publicity people that like get the hype out there and get bullshit stories out. Like, he's a first round pick. You know what I mean? It's not even a real story, but someone publishes it. Next thing you know, it's out there, and then people start saying, "Man, you might get picked in the first round." Still. Yeah, it's agents selling their guys. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. There's agents, and then there's like journalists with nothing going with nothing on. Nothing right going now. on. Like they're like cooking up stories. Which, like, yeah, we're cooking up. You know, right. we're, we're talking about the the draft, or yeah. we're talking about the combine here for over ten minutes. Like yeah. we didn't even watch the fucking thing. You know, what <laughs> I mean? well, there's no football. It gets tough. It gets tough. You see uh, that center from WVU. J- <laughs> uh, Jason Kelsey retired. He had a pretty good heartfelt speech. I didn't. It see went that. on for a while. Uh, him and Travis were crying. It was it was nice. They were crying together. Yeah, they were crying. He got he, he killed it. He it went on for a while. He would called. Uh, he was co- talked about uh, Nick Foles having a big dick, all kinds of stuff. Dude, he, he uh, when I after I watched that documentary about him, like I fought, I liked him before, but I fucking fell in love with like the dude, like. 
I was like, he is just a fucking awesome dude. Yeah, he seems like a solid guy. He seemed like he was going to retire in that because his kids, like you could see like his wife was pregnant. They had two little ones already. And he was like, you don't know how much of this time you actually get. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah it wants to be a dad. I get it. Uh yeah, it's nice to retire before you're 40 years old, you know what I mean? Now he gets to do a podcast with his brother, banging the fucking most popular person on earth. Yeah, and uh, they're going to- It's the biggest podcast right now, I think. Big, yeah, it's, I, think it's, I think it's one. It's I, number during, one. I don't know. Do they, they don't, is it just during football season? No, they do it all year. They do it all year? Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, it'd be crazy not to. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just- the, I seen why I clicked on the comments because like, I was bored, so I was just doing some comment reading. And it was like funny. This chick was like, "It's so crazy. This guy made a bracelet, gave it to Taylor Swift. Six months later, I'm crying, watching his brother retire from the NFL. So like, that's the type. They're just drawing in straight Taylor Swift fans. So like, <laughs> yeah. the, the whole Kelsey crew. Right. The, Jason Kelsey's wife is blowing up. Uh, Jason so yeah, Kelsey's. Jason Kelsey's wife is yeah. just yeah, completely. She's a completely normal chick. It seems like. And uh, she's getting more attention than she ever wanted and cashing in on it, rightfully so. Dude, it was funny. There was, like, a funny meme out there, and it was, like, it showed Jason Kelsey, and the it, it was, like, up in the Super Bowl booth, and he's talking to Taylor Swift and Ice Spice. It's, like, when your boy does four gaggers and tells everyone his business ideas for 10 minutes, because he's, like, it's... Yeah, 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 he's going for it. Uh, Meek Mill had a weird weekend. You guys don't... You see old Meek on Twitter? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, uh, Meek Mill's not gay. <laughs> he's not. He's not. I mean, did you have Twitter? I have it, but he didn't de- like. That de- was, he didn't deny it. But he's not. He said he loves pussy so much that even on the period, he'll fuck it. That's not a gay man. It John. took him a while to come around and say that. Dude, no, he he, it's, he went he went for two days, but not really denying it. He's just I. So the Diddy Diddy paperwork came out. Usher was on it, retracted. And Meek Mill was on it, also retracted. They said uh, R&B for por- performer that performed at the Super Bowl this year. And then uh, and then they said Philadelphia rapper used to date Nicki Minaj. <laughs> That's what it said in the paper. Right? That's what it said on the court documents. Right. They re- I, is it re- redacted or retracted? Redacted. Redacted, yeah. So they redacted that. But at the bottom, there was like a, a little like cliff note like, Pretty much saying exactly who they were. Right. So it was Usher. It was Meek, Diddy. They were having some sexy parties. Uh, allegedly were they fucking each other uh, though. I don't understand what's I going think, on with I, Diddy. I think it's. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think they're. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So, so Diddy. And then some real questionable videos have been resurfacing that really makes you take a second look at some stuff. At Diddy. At everybody, at all three. Everybody's. Of them. What the hell is going on? I think you just get so famous, the holes a hole, dude. To Hollywood, that hole, I, is like, it? I think so. Or like, I don't or you know. get to, or there's just gatekeepers, and you get to the top of the gate, and you came that far. Like, why? Like, yeah, you, like, gotta lick should... it, you gotta lick Titty's butthole to get fucking <laughs> the gate open, and you're like, is that what he was dude, doing? Dude, I don't know if I want to fucking yeah. lick Titty's butthole, but I definitely would do, I need money. Yeah. Like, so like, <laughs> what if one, did... one Titty butthole licking, and then, uh, now I'm rich. So like, how many people do you think licked Titty's butthole? And still didn't get on. He did, uh, that, he did that fucking show, man. Right. Band. Imagine how many times he goes root greased. Dylon. Dylon. Five just, best rappers. Dylon, Dylon, and Diddy's yeah, Chop, like. Yeah. Choppa was just <laughs> crazy rude. Diddy's rude. Like, oh, come on. Like, dude. it was nobody's beef. They got like 30 grand out of that fucking thing. They got nothing. Yeah, nothing. The, yeah, uh, Danny D. Kane fucking definitely. She, I mean, that the main chick, Aubrey, whatever, always goes at Diddy. They're taking they're taking the top down. Diddy's fucked. It, it looks like Jay Z's in like the in the sights too. So I don't know. I just the Diddy stuff is very. What strange. did Jay Z do? I don't Same know. thing. It's like I, I don't want to. Did I'm a big Hove guy. I know you are. I don't like, understand. I, it's it's not looking good for him either. Th- there's a, like, I'll tell you, they, they they they're they're gonna finish off Diddy first and then. See, Diddy's all, fucked. There, dude. There's a lot of is Diddy, Diddy like jail time? Maybe it's a looking that way. But but there there's a lot of Diddy, Hove, conspiracy theory killing Tupac. I mean that's I, a lot probably, of, they might have had something to do with it. Yeah, allegedly. You know, allegedly. Know. Yeah, it's, all this is alleged. But like I've listened to the rap lyrics. Meek just mm. went just tw- tweeted and tweeted and dude, Twitter was unbelievable. Were the they memes, brutal too? Oh, uh, it was. Once you click on like two. It's all my time was for like two days, and I was just cracking up, fucking laughing. They were just 
killing him and people in the comments just begging him to stop tweeting and he wouldn't stop tweeting and it's just, just like then he's trying to promote like an album at the same time that came out this weekend and people are like he did this for attention for his album like no this is you don't you don't do shit like this to get your album fucking popping. I've seen like him and that dude academics, academics going, are going after going each at other, it. and yeah. that's when like people were like, "Dude, are you gonna deny it or not?" And then like I was done like off. The I mean, Twitter he list. just he just says he's like, "Man, I love pussy. I don't think about it all the time, but sometimes it gets me but, high, but, and I like I like wet." Like bloody pussy and all kinds. Of, like he was just yeah. his tweets were just off the. Off the like, like almost like he was in like the room, like like in a room, like like try, they got a confession out of him. He's like, man, I ain't gay. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like yeah, it's like all the things. If you were like super gay and like they were asking you like, what do you think about <laughs> right, pussy? Like, right, right. It was like forty year old, forty year old virgin when the dude's like they're asking, he's talking about like pounding puss and he's talking about tits and he's like, you know, it's like a bag of sand. <laughs> dude, like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Ah, uh, but yeah, Meek's probably. It makes probably done here. I don't. I don't. It doesn't. You don't doesn't, think Rick Ross is going to bail him out? I think if I'm Rick Ross, you're staying far cut, away from cut this one. Tie. But like Usher, yeah. like Usher was more like a victim type thing. Yeah, right? I think Usher might have been more of a victim. I think Usher, Usher's being quiet. He might be able to dance his way through this one. Uh, <laughs> Usher already had his moment where he burned all of Atlanta with herpes. So like he, I think he's just going to fall back. Allegedly, he burned all of Atlanta with herpes. Did he? Yeah, but. Uh, He's to the Super Bowl. I think Usher's going to be fine through this. I think Diddy's in big trouble here because, like, it, it, it will be like quiet for a week, and then like the following week, it will just be the most insane shit ever. It's like him with it's like sex trafficking shit. It's him using a chick from the city girls to like involved in like sex trafficking. It's, it's like girls? it's just like a female like rap group. Uh-huh. It's a uh, it's a wild wild story. It's going to be a crazy documentary one day, but. uh it's. I, I, I think. Our, I, I think he, Kelly was bad. Yeah. yeah I think, I think he, these dudes like we, you ever I saw think, when I was younger. Like, yeah, you get famous. Like, you get to hook up with whoever you want. Like, like chicks. Yeah, right. Like, like, dudes. Like, yeah. Well, like little. Like, what's going on? But I mean, if you think about it, like you know, if you're a little, if you're a little singer and dancer, that's what he, that's what Diddy was. He's a singer and dancer, and now he's like, you know, you just get famous and. But that still won't give you a right what, what to are you saying, no, I'm not saying that. I'm what saying... You, what are you, pro-pedophile? Pro-pedophile? <laughs> Listen, this is anti-pedophile podcast. Let's just get that out there. Uh, it's okay to get but, famous and bang little kids? No, I, I, I mean, think, he used to sing and dance when he was little, too. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Diddy, I don't think Diddy he got sees a little... Himself it's not a little kid thing, I don't think. I think it's just like, it's more like a sex traffic thing. Boop. Fucking like drugging people, like just drugging, real weird shit. Some like, Cosbian. Yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> Bla- a lot of blackmail stuff. Like Paul. they would like. <laughs> yeah. That was my call. That was my yeah, he was putting uh, video cameras in he, everybody's well, room. He was doing shit like that, but he was also like showing dudes like, like see, you know, it was like a video of this producer, Stevie J, doing some weird shit. Like, see, like Stevie does it. It was like him like fucking some dude in the ass allegedly. Like just really like crazy shit. And uh, I think it's just the beginning of this. I think Diddy's in big trouble. Because he's had so many people around him for all these years. It's like one guy comes out. Like, he, all you got to do is fuck over one person that was around him all them years. And well, it's he like, fucked up over a million people, but I think he's just like, th- there's so many stories adding up, and all these people now have th- the internet's out there, and, you know, there's these videos, and they go viral as fuck, and people just start digging and digging and digging, yeah. and it's just not it's not just hearsay anymore. But, I mean, the fit- dudes were saying shit about Diddy, like, years ago. And like now it's just like I said, everybody's doing interviews and yeah, bringing it to the forefront here. <laughs> uh, Eagle Tits, let's do some voicemails here. What's up, guys? Water boy. My daughter and I were walking down the great city of Butler the other day. There's this uh, holistic food, uh, food store. We walk in and stuff, and it smells like ass. As we're leaving, we see a sign that says breast milk, two dollars an ounce. My first thought is. Whose breast is it coming from? All I can picture is a butler fat, just got her check at the beginning of the month, has a rack of ribs on her tits, and fucking milk in this shit. Also, do they drug test that stuff? Uh, it was just the weirdest thing ever, and don't buy breast milk. Just go out like a normal person, buy Infamy or whatever. All right, have a good one, guys. Butler Connie's a weird fucking... Between some of the relationship issues they've had with Waterboy and his 42-year-old boy and the 19-year-old that's getting up like Diddy. Yeah, like, I wonder <laughs> if that dude's in jail yet. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's legal just to be selling breast milk like that. There, there gotta be... 
some regulations around that. I think, unless it's like a little farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if it's a farmer's market. So you're selling cow's milk, you're selling fucking oat milk, you're selling all these milks. I guess a little t- titty milk can't hurt. If it's a holistic. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, it's one thing to just like try your wife's. Wife's breast milk. Do you drink a stranger's breast milk? That's that's strange. Like Waterboy said, that could be anybody on the other side of that titty. You don't know. You don't know. Anybody could be holding that udder in that bottle. Right. Ugh. Hey, fellas. Jason out of Banks here. I got a gear grinder. Uh, so I'm coming home uh, from vacation. I was in the airport. And uh, walking through the airport, just got off the plane, you know, walking to the next gate for a connecting flight. And I've got people to the right of me. I'm walking maybe, you know, down the middle of uh, this, you know, big old, you know, walkway. And a uh, guy straight in front of me is coming at me. And uh, all, I, all of a sudden I hear him say, to the right, to the right, on the right. And I'm like, what is this guy screaming? And uh, he just he just walks right into me. And, I, you know, I, I have nowhere to go on the right. There's people beside me. But there's plenty of room to left me to his right. But I guess if I, I was in the left side of this giant hallway and he didn't think he should move over. And I'm just thinking, where does this man think he is? Is the airport full of people that are just conscientious? And, you know, is this a roadway where we are forced to stay on the right or else we're going to, you know, get pulled over? You're in the airport. It's a fucking train wreck in there. It's a circus. All right, head on a swivel. Get out of my way. I'll move or I'll, I'll run you over. So he, he, we bumped shoulders. He walked past me. I yelled after him. My, my yinzer came out. Uh, you know, he wasn't having it. He just kept walking, pussy. But anyway, I just wanted to know, you know, you guys ever run into anybody with uh, some fucking airport etiquette like this tool bag? No, I'm not getting tried like that in the airport. I'll tell you that. I'm low. I'm low on my shoulder. You're coming at me like, yeah, you're coming. You're going down. Yeah, it's like weird. Like there wasn't a ton of people when I was at the airport, but there was some hustle going on. Everybody's There's in some a hustle. Hurry. That's yeah. a restaurant thing. Like that's like if you're working in a bar or a busy restaurant. It's like behind to the right, to right. the right, to the left, to the left. That, that's what like that is. Which that makes sense in like right. that in that type of fucking environment. The airport. The only way, like, I don't know. I feel like airport. Like people do like walk a certain way like they do pick a side so if yeah. you're kind of like walking on the other side where the other way the traffic's going that's kind of a weird move yeah, if you're like in a regular hallway somebody just can't come jam into you no they can't like make there, a there's they that, can't make a v-line over to you to there's fucking that, like, walk speed into you. walking thing that like that's what move, i thought yeah, he was talking about but, like, it says it says on there like if you're standing still stay to the right stay to the right if, if you want to walk that's what i thought he was talking left. about at first the dude just ran in the back that's of him that'd I be thought. crazy but like I don't know. This dude was just out looking for some contact. <laughs> yeah, like. some people were just, dude. People were, people were weird as fuck. Dude. People are all angry. <laughs> but sometimes, anymore. like, sometimes I'm like, all right, weirdo, be weird. But other times, you gotta like, like, all right, n- not today, weirdo. Like, you gotta fucking right. lower your shoulder and fucking send somebody into the fucking into the guardrail. That's what you gotta do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Send a message. Yep. What's up, boys? Joe from Derry here. Just calling in with a brother in arms for Kenny. I agree with his comments about trying to get the uh, 40-year-olds out and about and committing to do stuff. thing is, I know we're all probably drinking anyways, even with the family around. Probably even more so. <laughs> Let's hang out together. Everyone's busy. Shit, I was busy drinking 17 beers while coaching a basketball game last week. <laughs> Maybe we could do that all together at the Polar Plunge or make the cage rage a family <laughs> event. Anyways, thanks, Kenny, and great job, boys. Joe, Joe from Derry, I'd love to know the final score of that game, and if you did, if you did or did not get ejected. We had some coaches that would drink seventeen yeah. beers like before, At during, before and after the game. game. Yeah, they kept it under wraps they, during the game. Yeah, I, take a little break. I had a maybe. Pu- they come right up from the soldiers and sailors. Yeah, coach yeah. or squad. Dry, well, well, if it was a away game, they, they, drive, to- they drive you out there. Dude, I I had a coach. I won't throw him under no, the no, bus. No, don't throw him under the bus. He put out. He put three. He came out of soldiers, staggering, and put three of us. He had four of us. Someone got to sit in the front. Someone got to sit behind the seats. It was a pickup truck, and two of us had to sit in the back. And we got on the parkway and went to Churchill. Yeah, I know. I've been on that ride before. Uh, a few. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we I we I had coaches that definitely drank and definitely coached. But I mean, they were there. They were coaching. Give them credit for that. Right. They, yeah. got, they got us through the game. So it is what it is. Right. Dees actually had a central coach, uh, going out to like a JV hoop game or something like that. I think, 
And he said they were at a red light. Dude was like, ah, he was like, he put it apart. He was like, stay here for a second. Hops out, grabs like three beers out of his trunk, cracks them, and fucking well, just you know keeps it fucking moving. Like he had a, he had a case in the trunk ready to roll. Hit like three for the ride. I think I seen this the other day, which it's like it's a good point. If you're sober, you should be able to drink like two or three beers to your destination, and then when you get there, you, you know then we're driving after that. But I mean, drink a beer while you drive. Drink a beer while you drive. Is every state anti? Yeah, I don't, yeah, open I don't, container? I don't think you could open container. No, you can't. Yeah. I don't know. Well, about, I mean, like I don't you, know about any you, state. Some states you could leave the bar and walk to another bar with a drink. Yeah, shit like that. But like, as far as like driving, I don't think you could drive with like an open container anywhere. Okay. No, you're not talking your way out of that. Yeah. One. <laughs> I guess that, that kind of muddies the water. I'm like, oh, this is my and the, my first beer. Buddy. You're kind of the cops are kind of used to seeing people with beers now in the car. And my, yeah, it probably it's a slippery slope. You get people, you know, an inch they take a mile. But uh, but I you know, a nice little nice little drive with a brew, man. That'd you be- ever did it when you were younger? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, John. I did that yeah, when I was here. <laughs> it's nice. What up, boys? Eric from Portview. Quick gear grinder. Cruising the old face page marketplace, man, and it's you guys got to watch. It's people are selling stuff. They're saying it's one thing, but it's another. You know, be truthful with the people when you post shit, man. Don't waste people's times. You know, you want people looking at your shit, and then you're not even posting the right deal. Well, I'm thinking about the boys off the top of my head. Fish fries and everything, you know, it's fish fry season. You know, what is your guys' go-to for good old-fashioned, you know, church fish fry or fire hall fish fry? As always, boys, keep doing the damn thing, man. We'll holler at you. Thanks, buddy. Hey, well, did, did you edit two, two voicemails together there? Or was that no, just, no, that was one just I, I thorough, took, th- I took some off that was head. one complete thought right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm a fish fry guy for sure. Are you guys? No. No. Really? I'll, I'll get pierogies. I don't mind it. Like if you talk to me, I'll do it. I'd rather have some shrimp or something. Yeah, you know, like a nice little cod sandwich, no. little fried cod. They mm-hmm. do, they do shrimp though. Yeah, don't they'll solve, do shrimp. I know. Oh. Like if I would, I'd go. Johanna likes one in Munhall. Yeah, can't yeah, remember the far. name. My Eddie's dad. I know exactly Pitos. what you're talking about. It's a church. No, it's a church. Okay. Yeah, it's up by that beer distributor. I don't think is there anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, Munhall. Yeah, but yeah, Munhall got a good one. Uh St. Rosalie's has St. Rosalie's got a St. big Rizzo, one. They still have one yeah, cracking? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah St. Teresa's so. got one. I haven't done it yet this year. I want to uh the Pittsburgh Sandwich Society does a really nice uh fish. They're down there in Millville. Uh See, I don't need a huge piece of cod. What I don't like is like I don't like I'll, I'll take a big, bigger piece of fish. I hate like those like ones where it's just like a regular size bun and like a foot of fish. <laughs> right, like, yeah. dude, I need like I can't. Come on, what are we doing here? It's I'd stupid. rather just take it out of the bun and just get some good cocktail sauce. Big Jim's in the Run does though. They do a major it, fish. Uh, yeah. Nice yeah. fish sandwich. So, yeah. so does Zanos, and then uh, I know Fat Butcher Shop. He posted one on Instagram the other day. Yeah, oh, yeah, I bet they got a good one. Yeah, Fat Butcher Shop. Their sandwiches are freaking fire. As long as it's fire. crispy enough, I could dig it. Yeah, it's drowned in fucking hot sauce, tartar sauce, and ketchup. You know what I mean? To make <laughs> anything good. You'll throw all three of them on. I'll go all three. Okay. Definitely tartar and ketchup. And I'm, if I'm feeling Dude, a little frisky. Last Friday, Jane was like, "I'm going to make this shrimp, like butter noodle shrimp scampi." Th-. I'm like, "All right, sure, cool." I get home, she I didn't have time to get the shrimp. I'm like, <laughs> See, so you butter noodles. Butter noodles. It was like there were some peppers chopped up in there, but like, dude, I had my mind set on like it was I like could already taste the shrimp with like butter noodles. It I'm was like, like a jam. You say you're to make a shrimp scampi and not have the I shrimp. I have time to get the shrimp. I'm you like, gotta, you gotta make time to get the shrimp. Yeah, like, dude, you like, hey girls, we gotta go get the shrimp. We got noodles, uh, yeah, and whatever the hell your mom can. That's cock. just a scampi. I I remember one of our boys. He had uh, a card and it had food stamps on it. And uh, he had recently got out of prison, and uh, he was like, "Dude, I'm gonna hook us up tonight." And he literally came home with twelve oodles, noodles, cheese curls, and like some beef sticks. And was like, "I'm gonna make a fire ass chichi." I'm like, "You know, you can buy whatever you want." Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, the, it's, it's not the commissary. It's not the commissary <laughs> anymore, right? <laughs> like, was the chichi good? I, I we ate it. I was on drugs. I was ate anything, but I was like, "Yeah, you know." That's crazy to like go out and like like man, I'm gonna get something good to eat and come back with that. Yeah. With the amount but of everybody too. that comes out of jail, they tell you about a chi chi. Yeah, yeah, because that's like your go to every night. And then what's the fifi? That's the thing you fuck, right? <laughs> yeah, fifi's like when you take like 
So you'll take a, a roll of toilet paper, you'll take the cardboard out of the middle of the roll of toilet paper, then the kitchen workers get gloves. So you take the glove and put it around the Fifi and then the inside, like there's the finger, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you just like, you order your hand lotion or whatever, you know, lotion it up and you bang it. Uh, dudes did it different ways. Some dudes were just used to jerk off. Other dudes would actually fuck it. Like what they would do is take the mattress, roll the mattress over, and then stick the Fifi in the crease of the mattress and fuck that. Get it nice and tight. Yeah, they'd bang they it up. They wanted some action to pretend yeah, like, yeah. yeah they I were... always get those two confused. They're such, like, close in names, but two totally different things. Yeah, it's like talking in, in toilets in jail. You know yeah. I mean? that's, that's a big thing, too. Yep. Um, just a refresher on last week. You guys thought Waterboy or uh, Gary may have called in twice. In yeah. Different voice. This is his response. Okay. <laughs> Hey, what's up, boys? Gary from Baldwin. Um, <laughs> look, I want to nip the conspiracy theory in the bud. Uh, also, Eagle Fish, you're doing God's work, man. Great job. I want to nip the conspiracy theory in the bud. I had nothing to do with that. Like I said, I fucking love Kenny. I'm just a guy calling in. And reading between the tea leaves, it sounds like Jack don't fucking, you might not like me too much. You know, I, this ain't no bits. You don't know fucking skits. I'm just a guy calling in. I love you, Jack. And I hope, I hope. <laughs> One day you'll love me too. <laughs> um, fuck you, big dick. Big dick, show me. Big dick, big dick. Hey, what's up, brother? I'd love to drink a beer with you. Drink a beer with you any day of the fucking week, man. Fuck, I'd drink a case of beer with you any any fucking day of the week. I don't even care if it's a fucking school night. <laughs> oh, dude, I was in fucking Dallas this week, and I ran into, I ran into Cam Newton. That's a big motherfucker. He was at this resort called Gaylord outside of Dallas. And fucking, I'll tell you, that fucking resort, woo, it was real nice. I fucking didn't belong there. But anyways, uh, Cam Newton, yeah, su super big motherfucker. I'll tell you that much, Gaylord Resort. Fucking stupid name for a resort, though. Everybody knows Jesus didn't suck cock. One day, I don't know, he had long hair. All right, well, keep up the good work, boys. Uh, you know, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. I feel like I'm tripping, dude. I'm like Gary. I, I, I. I that might be Gary. Yeah. Keep calling, buddy. Yeah, yeah dude, dude, I like calling. you just fine. I'm, I'm a Kenny guy. I'm trying to create a little bit of a rivalry here. I feel like everybody you came in hot the first few weeks. Some like new voicemails. And everybody forgot about Kenny. We just got. I, I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows Kenny's king around here. Yeah. Uh, but no, keep calling in, dude. You're a uh, you're a fucking madman. Obviously, you're out of your mind. Uh, but yeah, keep calling, man. What? what I, that took a turn. That one, that one took a turn. So I, I I have inside information on that. So Gary has a video of him interviewing Cam Newton. Was supposed to send me the video and like couldn't figure out how to do it. But he has like he's like, dude, I did an interview with him and Bill Belichick. I think so. He's yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What does Gary do for work? I don't know. He, he was a lot apparently. Dude, I mean, like he sends me pictures from like. Mich he was in like the Michigan State locker room after a big win, and like they were giving this kid a jersey. Like, Gary, I we're gonna need a little bio about yeah. you. We're like, we are. You're from Baldwin. What do you do for work? How old are you? <laughs> like, just give us a little background, uh, so we know what we're dealing with here. Because like this, you're, <laughs> the stories you call in with, and then like like Zebird says with other stuff, it just it's not really adding up. So I, I, I paint a little picture. Of who Gary is for us in the audience, so we get a better idea of what we're dealing with here. But yeah, definitely keep calling in. I like you just fine. I'm just I'm not Kenny's number one. What's up, boys? It's Kenny. <laughs> Bert, I sent you the text. This will explain it. The cold plunge. I started doing it beginning of the year or so. I I got sold on it because this guy said uh, it's like a, a line of coke last. Nine minutes to hide, but the cold plunge hide lasts for about six hours. I'm like, huh, I've heard about all the health benefits and shit before. Maybe I'll give us a shot. <laughs> Do it right in the morning. The first time I've turned all the cold, I don't, I don't have a plunge. I got a cold shower. So, but they said, you know, you don't really, it, it's good enough. So you get in the cold shower. First time I got in, I got right the fuck out. I said, fuck this. Next time I tried to do it for a minute. And it's like, how long is this fucking minute? I didn't hit the start timer on my on my timer on my phone. I didn't, and then now I'm up to about three minutes though. Anyways, and it does feel fucking good for you know until lunchtime, dude. You feel great, and you don't you feel good the rest of the day, and you sleep better at night after you do it. I ain't missed a day in in about a month, and uh, so I highly recommend it. All you need is a cold shower. You don't even need to fucking plunge. And uh, now, guys, three guys again on the show. What the fuck? I can't read minds. If you need my help, send the Polish Falcon in the air like it would light, it would like a fucking bat signal. I'll be there to help. You know, 
But you got you gotta let me know. I this... can't read minds and just show up. I got these chumps taking shots at me on the voicemail here. <laughs> there. Yeah, I think so. We didn't know Shuli wasn't coming until about fifteen minutes before the show, and that's where it's kind of that kind of has. But we knew. I guess we knew you were going on vacation. Uh, yeah, we got definitely got to get Kenny back on because like I we he does. There's a bit of a rivalry growing here. Yeah, and like I so feel like you guys are like. You, you guys have chosen your side. You know, there's a new toy to play with in Gary, and everybody's forgetting about fucking old Uncle Kenny. I didn't forget about Uncle Kenny. Yeah, what are you talking about? I was just Gary is I'd Gary say, is. He blows my mind every time he calls. You, you Gary's have, like a speedball. Like you don't know yeah. where the fuck. It's just like, like he's a, talking, and it's yeah. just it's just like what's happening in my brain right now. Yeah, like I I text with these people because I put my phone number on the things. So like I get texts from <laughs> fucking everybody. So don't tell me whose side I'm picking. You know what I mean? I'm definitely Team Kenny for life. But like Kenny was telling me about the poll. About it, but I didn't want to bring it up because he was like, I'll, t- I'll explain the whole thing. So he just does cold showers. He yeah, didn't buy a whole a, big fucking tub. That thing. I, dude, I, so I bought the tub because I thought I would be more likely to hop out of the shower because it's like easier to like get out of the tub. The tub I like, I did for like, I think I did for three minutes the first time I went in. I just stopped doing That's it because nuts. it was like, it's it's a whole, shower. It's like a whole to do. Yeah, to, the shower <laughs> seems like it's so easy to get out of the shower. You know what I mean? Once you're, once you're in the tub, like you kind of numb up, and it's it's not yeah. that bad. You did three but, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But like, the shower is—you just gotta step out of it, and it's over. You know, that's why I was never like a good runner because all you have to do is stop. Right. You know? right. You know? Like I just—I yeah. don't know. Maybe I'll try it again. So, dudes, there's a couple other dudes that are hyping it up. I don't know. I just didn't see it. I mean, I guess I felt like okay. But you weren't like, ah, oh. uh, yeah, it wasn't anything. Tr- but just I only to did raise it. your endorphins, be all yeah, like, I did it a couple times. And I don't know, maybe I'll try it again. I, I will say this when, when I did the polar plunge this year, it was fucking freezing cold down there. And like, I was in literally for literally, I'd say a good seven seconds. And I like freaked out and like jumped out of the pool. Jack had to bring it up and say, I must like threw Croft's kids <laughs> you off. stiff armed his kids <laughs> off. <laughs> the, the, no, the I let him go. I came to my it senses. It was close. It was close because I was just like, I could get the fuck out of this pool. And it was all because I wore a fucking stupid thermal when I jumped in, but I'll never do that again. But I'll tell you what, you do feel like you called uh, me. You were hyped up afterwards. You got a natural high. Yeah, I didn't get that, but I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again. Hey everybody, Eagle Tits here. Time for your favorite part of the show: the ads. Our sponsors help keep the show going. So if anybody that we talk about interests you, please go show them support. All right, let's get into this. Located in the heart of Pittsburgh's South Side. 12 Whiskey Barbecue features 100 bottle craft beers and 28 drafts from local and indie brewers. Their kitchen's open late and they have a crazy good menu. On top of that, they have events at the bar as well as offer catering. Birthdays, weddings, business events, and more, they've got you covered. Check them out at 12pgh.com or visit them at 1222 East Carson Street. That's T-W-E-L-V-E-P-G-H.com. Primetime Appliance. You've heard us talk about them before. Their company puts the customer first. They're punctual, and they take their time to get the job done right the first time. Cooktop repair, dishwasher repair, dryer repair, electric appliance repair, freezer repair, gas appliance repair, refrigerator repair, washer repair. I could go on all day. Have an emergency? Call them at 412-896-1395 or visit them at primetimeappliance.com. Do you love hot sauce? Do you love the city of Pittsburgh? Then why not try a sauce made right here in the city? That's right, I'm talking about Artie's Hot Sauce. Our buddy Artie currently has seven sauces available. He has Arbel and Sandy, Habanera Island, Teriyaki Thai, Pizza Shop, Sweet Jalapeno, Hop and Jalapeno, Triple Pepper Fret, and Hot and Sour Serrano. All crafted with no artificial flavors, with hand-picked selections of chili peppers that guarantee an unforgettable culinary adventure. What are you waiting for? Visit Artie'sHotSauce.com. A-R-T-I-E-S HotSauce.com. Nothing beats a local neighborhood butcher. Locally sourced, pasture-raised, nose-to-tail meats. They connect the farmer to provide customers with the best beef, lamb, chicken, and pork that Western Pennsylvania has to offer. The craft of whole animal butchery requires respect for both the animal and the customer. Come see the different satin bags. Visit them at 5151 Butler Street, Pittsburgh, PA, 15201, or check out their website at fatbutcher.com. Let's talk Carlson and Associates Real Estate Services. Located in Pittsburgh Southside, they specialize in all aspects of real estate business, including residential and commercial sales, residential and commercial leasing, 
multifamily investment, historic buildings, and development in and around the city. Have a question about home buying, selling, or rentals? Give them a call at 412-431-1718 or visit them at casouthside.com. That's casouthside.com. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield's Finest Podcast. Hey, real quick, we just wanted to give a shout-out to everyone that took time to make a purchase for the St. Patrick's Day merchandise sale. This actually was our biggest sale that we've ever had um, item-wise as far as, like, since we've been doing this for a couple years. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It helps the podcast out a lot. Also, got to give two big shout-outs to Eric Tamino, Eric Tamino, who I, he was down in the cage range, my main man, for becoming a big dick member of the month. Drew Maruski. Oh, who, Maruskers! Maruskers is a big mm-hmm. dick member of the month. And Mike Bedard. Mikey Bedard. But, but I know Mike, but he's came to some comedy shows. Good guy. They're all big dick members now. We are at 68 members. I think, no, I think we might have hit 70. Like we said, we're 30 shy of seeing Eagles tits. Yep. So, Larry, them 30 come in. Be ready to flash them yam yams. <laughs> Get them titties out, yeah. boy. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into what? <laughs> uh, jump into what wait, fuck, I'm out of it, Your dude. first episode? It, yeah. All right, Jack, who's corn dick? <laughs> you want to do gear grinder so bad. <laughs> corn dick, buddy. We're in yeah, the corn I know. dick. I just, uh, That's all right. You're doing great, dick. dude. Don't get nervous. Uh, kids at Deer Creek School in Oklahoma were sucking toes at school fundraiser. Uh, I, at first, I thought this was teachers. And I was like, this is the most insane shit I've ever seen before uh, in my life. What the fuck? But it- it's still strange. It's a bunch of seniors, though. And, like, they signed up to do it, so they kind of knew what they were getting into. But, like, they're sucking dogs, Wh- Whose man. toes are getting sucked? Uh, other other, like, other, other seniors. Students. Yeah. So it's not – they uh. raised 150 grand at this thing for, like <laughs> – but, like, that's not still. But at first, I was like, oh, my God, these kids are sucking teachers' toes yeah. for, like, a fundraiser. Yeah, which been that's, what, that's how they presented it. Yeah. On the uh, internet. So I almost wrote that. Then I was like, let me click on this real quick. Uh, still strange, though. Like, I don't, I can't see it all over ice, them letting us I, suck I, some I, chicks' I, toes. I don't like the way they're sucking the toe because they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going back that one kid's fl- sucking like a dick. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. looks like he's 10. Yeah, I don't. It's, so it said it was all seniors. These kids, the the dudes, you can't see they the girls. They look little. They look young, but I mean, yeah, high, the kid right there. High looks school like kids eight. look young to us. We're older than hell. No, but I mean, those look like like twelve year old kids sucking yeah. toes. But they're like, you know what I mean? Like there might have been like three dudes that were like, I love feet. I'll yeah. suck them. I'll suck them toes. But like the high school, like doubled down on it. Like they were not apologizing for anything. The kids knew exactly what they're doing. We raised a bunch of money. We kind of do this every year. Like mind your fucking business. So uh, I kind of respect. So, so I respect the fact that they're saying they do it every year. And we're just finding out about it now. It's like a badge of honor to lick somebody's feet. Yeah, sucking on. You them ever toe. suck on your girl's toes? I heard you guys were talking toes last week. I've never been a toe guy. You uh, never even delved in. Just I, yeah, I mean I delved in yeah. back in the day, like. It's like, oh, it's like the bucket list. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what, like something you did. Like, like, yeah, not anywhere near my adulthood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I just never been like a huge foot guy. You know what I mean? No, I don't. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not going to kink shame anybody. I, I don't understand it at all. No, the toe thing. No, but I mean, it's a, there's a big market for it out there. Oh yeah, huge. Yeah, I, I, I've done. Yeah, I've done some toe stuff. That was there was like. When we were kids, there was stuff, you know, you had, that you had to try. Someone tried it, now everyone got to fucking try it. Yeah. Next thing you know, someone's been walking around at Alder Ice all day, and you're sucking their toes. <laughs> and like, what the fuck's going <laughs> on? Yeah, it was 100 degrees in there. Oh, the, annex, the annex was 102 today. <laughs> uh, Trader Joe's, uh, 61,000 pounds of chicken dumplings found in Trader Joe's soup dumplings recalled chicken soup dumplings uh recalled for uh containing permanent marker Tra- i'm a trader joe's guy this shit happens to trader joe's a lot they get a bunch of recalls but how the fuck does permanent marker get into a fucking in your soup dumplings i'm gonna tell you right now and this is i was talking to risotto about this and i noticed this at trader joe's a lot of their shit does not have like a seal like it's sealed it's sealed but it's not it's not it's it's like some slack dick in the back slapped it on and and someone could very open it and contaminate that it's like remember we did a story it's very limited packaging a couple years ago about the girl who got in trouble she was licking all the ice creams yeah that was a trader joe's but no but uh, that was like you want that plastic yes if it's broken yeah i need a plastic seal for sure 
But yeah, Trader Joe's doesn't really. They just they have the plastic seal, but they don't do any other pat. There's no like cardboard around anything and really anything like that. It's usually just a seal. So I, I get they're probably trying to like you know not, not waste pollute yeah, the environment. But, yeah, they're they're getting. It seems like a lot, but like magic or like magic marker and soup dumplings. Like, I don't get it. That happen. I don't get are, it either. Like what I'm wondering is like, are you breaking the marker open and like? I mean, it's still no. It's all no, absorbed. Sets. It's yeah. all absorbed through like the marker tip sponge, which goes all the way down. Like I don't, I don't understand. Me either. Uh, Zebra, you're a gamer. You like MLB the Show? Oh, I love it. You show guy. I always been. I I do like uh, baseball games, video games. Yeah, they're, they're I, fun. So do I. They're hard. They are, especially the hitting. It's yeah. super fucking hard. Yeah. Do you put it on like no balls? What's that? No, I I did. And then you just start beating the computer so, so bad. bad that you have to like, so I'm like, I got it. And like, dude, the fucked up thing is like, I swing at a lot of balls. Yeah. And I miss. Yep. <laughs> dude, you want to, some fights back in the day when we were kids? If you were playing strikes only and someone threw a fucking ball to strike you out, dude, it was an instant fist fight. Dude, I, I got punched in the face by Bill Tenney over a game of Madden one time. It was, uh, I'll never forget it. I had beaten Bill, and Bill decided uh, he would celebrate my victory by punching me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you uh, remember how we used to play, like, strikes only, like, no balls? Yes. And, like, you would throw one on in the, the video dirt, game. On the video game, and yeah. then you would fucking throw one in the dirt, strike somebody out, and it was instant fist fight. Instant. Uh, but yeah, MLB the show announces they're they're going to female player mode, so you could like you could start like a you know you could start a franchise. You love starting franchises. Yeah, and <laughs> you, could, you could start it as like a female and play with, like as a female player. Uh, Hated it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, I, I mean, that's cool. I mean, if you're a chick and you want to do like, I mean, chicks are more into like high speed softball. For sure. Yeah, I guess there's no softball video games, but like, why not make why not make like that like all right MLB the show, and then like s- instead of like making a female baseball player, make like a, a little softball like version like of the it. Fast Might not a whole different video game, just like something else to do. Dude, like like that like even at the high school level that fast uh, softball is it's crazy. super competitive, and I know parents that like go they spend a ton of money. Their kids go to a ton of training. They're like fucking really good athletes. The opportunities are out there for scholarships. I think. I think that is actually, like, it's starting to take off, like, a lot. I think that's been big for a while. Like, Jenny Finch back in the day. Like, I, that's wow. actually, that's like. Who's that, that Florida pitcher? Uh, Arizona. She was, uh, what a rocket she She was is. tall, man. She threw gas. Uh, <laughs> but, in like, fastball softball is, like, better to watch than, like, uh, I'd rather watch a, 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 I'd rather watch a girls' fastball softball game than a major league baseball game, I think. I just feel like there's more uh, the underhand. It seems like they're throwing hard. That's something I feel like it'd be really hard to do, like the fast pitch. Yeah, I never really it's tried hard. to do it. It's hard. My sister used to play water ice, and she would like try to pitch. I see. That's I know the the routine Technique. of it. Yeah, but it the, like the thing about it is they're playing like a little league field, so like yeah. that shit is close. It's yeah. very close. The corner is hot. Yeah, the corner is very hot. Uh, it, yeah, they do play on very small bases. That that's odd. To me, that they would do that. I mean, I mean, I guess like it is what it is. I I just don't understand. Like you know, they well they we do. Had few, f- we had a few girls play Greenfield baseball when we were yeah. younger, and they were good. Yeah, right? they, yeah they the were girls go- that did play were actually really good. And like I totally get that, but I'm just saying I I don't like they do have one. I play NBA uh, 2K, and like you, but there is a WNBA like version. So, y- yeah, like you can go switch over and play WNBA if you want. You know what I mean? But like. There's no professional women's baseball team. Have you ever played the WNBA? No, I haven't. You gotta tr- see how fucking horrible that is. Yeah, spe- dude, I'll tell you what I did play uh, right before or last week. Uh, Joe Welsh decided he, was, he wanted to challenge me at Madden. No problem, Joe. Did you, did the you take him the Took gave him the business. I uh, do. He did. He, you were you playing online or were you playing in person? Online. online. We, so, but I will say this: I have PlayStation Four. It's PlayStation Five. He said the game's a little bit different. But like Joe, don't realize, like, dude, I'm a thinker. I'm clock management. I get that lead. I'm chewing the clock. You running the ball? You ain't getting that ball back, Joe. Uh, I hate playing guys like you. But I, but I was fucking throwing, I, dude. I picked the Cleveland Browns. Are you talking shit? I had so I have a fucking headset plugged in, ready to talk all kind of shit. Joe don't have one. Joe don't have a headset. Yeah, his wasn't working. He uh, said. We had a good time though. All right. Uh, long COVID could be the reason for your bad hangovers. It's crazy. They're still trying to like bring like COVID up for like anything. Uh, I don't really see how this is. They're saying they tested people that have long COVID 
and they just said, yeah, my hangovers have been really bad. I think you just hit a certain age and your hangovers yeah. are really fucking bad. Right. Uh, what just, age is that? Oh, man, for me, it was... I feel, I feel like my hangovers start getting bad around like 28. Yeah, 30. Yeah, and then like... there was, I remember there was a significant difference around like 27, 28. And then like, yeah, 30, 34 to like... I th- I think I stopped going hard around like 36. So like 30, yeah, it's horrible. And then like even now, if I get, if I get after every once in a while, it's fucking so bad, it's crazy. I, I mean, it was just crazy thinking about, I, I actually, for some reason, remembered my first hang, like my really bad hangover. And I happened to be, I was 16 years old. I was working at Minio's and I had to walk to work. And I remember like, because before you kind of have a little hangover, it was almost like cool. Oh, yeah, was cool. Yeah, yeah. Yep. like, dude, what's up? Oh, dude, I'm fucking hurting. But like, I was never hurting like this, and like, where I was like the shaking and the vomiting, and I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna drink again. Yeah. See, like, I don't even like that. That was just like you were just throw up like a maniac when you were a kid, and like then it kind of went away. Yeah. Like with the older ones, it's just like it's it's mental. Exactly. It's it's, yeah, it's brutal. I'm a dude. piece of shit. Piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> fucking did it again. Right. Yeah. What's wrong with me? Yeah, why do I keep doing this? <laughs> just yeah. t- just talked to one of our friends today, happened to see him and he had said to me, like, dude, that time he was like, dude, last time I ran into you, I was you know, I was drinking. He was like, dude, I, I was fucked up for two weeks. Yeah. No, I went to my my father in law had a birthday party. And I didn't go crazy hard, but like I, I had definitely had some drinks. It fucked my whole week up. It fucked my whole entire week up. And was like, your anxiety like through the roof? Yeah, and I didn't even do anything like anything to have any anxiety over like no. at all. And I was just like, this is. I still feel like shit. Like it's just it, uh, it fucks up. Like you eat like garbage. I don't know. It's just it's fucking brutal. Some people like talk shit. I just feel like some people's hangovers are so much worse than others, and it's just like you can't. It's just one of those things. Like I said, if you're conscientious of what you drink. Yeah, if, if if I stick to beer, I'll kind of be like it's manageable. If I get into that Jameson and the beer, that's when it's not. Yeah, it's not, it's yeah. Not the crown can the crown can eat you up. Yeah. What's the wor- in your guys' opinion? What like what will give you? What alcohol will give you the worst hangover? I think you just get into the shots, especially like back in the day when it was like a bunch of bombs, you know, Red yeah, Bull the sh- shit. The like worst, that. I think, like. Like, yeah, uh, washing apples, anything like real sugary, sugary yeah. It, just, yeah. it fucking fucks you the fuck. Uh, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. Uh, brother in arms, or no, wait, this is a good one, actually. Uh, we had a guy's lady threaten to post his shitty drawers, <laughs> and he got ahead of it, and he posted himself. So this dude posts, like, two pictures of, like, shitty underwear. And, Where? On Facebook. And he says, man to man, am I wrong? My ex sent me these saying she was going to post my drawers. But I'm a man. This is normal, question mark. I'm sure other men can relate. I'm not a female. I don't wipe how y'all women wipe. We shit, we shit wipe once and carry, along, and carry on. As long as I shower when I take them off, I really don't see the issue. To other men out there, please back me on this because females really overdoing it over here. My drawers, my drawers like you can't wash them. I don't know. He, he uh, dude writes like an idiot. So this dude is saying he gives himself one good, he, he, like one wipe. So he didn't shit himself. He has Dookie no, streaks. No, he, he has Dookie streaks. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> Are he's, we yeah. talking like, a, like, did he show? Well, yeah, he they're pick, bad. They're, uh, yeah, they're he not. He has tidy whitey. No, they're, they're, they're like, they're not white. They're not for you can see the Dookie streak. Yeah, dude, you can see them clear as day. I mean, they're, they're is, yeah. I mean, you know what a Dookie streak seems yeah, like. Yeah, I get it. And like, I mean, there's a, like, that one's worse. So yeah. like, they're bad streaks, dude. They're not good streaks. Yeah, yeah, you want to wipe, wipe until better. you're clean as yeah. possible. Yeah, so I, I like tried to like find this was like uh, like a screen a post of a screenshot. So like, I wanted to find like the I wanted to get it in the comments. I'm sure the dudes get roasted. Like, dude, no, you're growing up. You got to wipe your ass until there's no <laughs> no shit on it. Yeah, uh, but I mean, dude, you're gonna find a streak. Like that's gonna you know that's <laughs> gonna happen every once in a blue moon. But like you know, you let a fart go or something like that, your butthole gets a little itchy. You don't wipe as good enough as you should have, and then fucking you know, look your underwear when you fucking go home, and it's not great. Right. Wet farts happen. Wet yeah. farts happen once a year, twice a year. Yeah, maybe. but like as as a as a grown. That's up, speaking of being hungover. Yeah, you <laughs> can't trust you. the fart. You can't sure. trust it. Sure. Short, short yourself. But yeah, as far as like you just taking it like. The easy road on wiping yourself. That's just. I mean, just saying that as men, we wipe once and keep it moving. Like, dude, who? No. Who was your dad? Yeah. They really, well, they really dropped the ball. 
Well, you hey, mean, yeah, yeah. What, would you wipe? Did you know how to wipe your ass? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, my grandma taught me when I was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> she was, said when she quit wiping it for you. Yeah, she was like, she was like, oh, you start wearing these. I've been wearing Depends ever since. I'm just Dude, cool. He, he so he, this dude was just washing, walking around with like an itchy ass all day. It's, it's brutal. Dude, I think you learn as a kid, like when your parents stop wiping your ass, and then like you don't wipe good enough, and you get like a rash. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it starts yeah. to hurt. And you're, you're like, like, shit, I need to do a better need, job. I need, I need to spend a little time on yeah, this. Right. Yeah, right. But it, I mean, there's a learning curve there for right. sure. I mean, that's like, yeah, when you're younger, not when you're like 40. Yeah, definitely <laughs> not when you're. Yeah, it's definitely, I'm, it's definitely something you should you should be under. You should have like you should you should get to high school. You should be wiping your ass just fine. Right. I I wonder what the ransom was for this because she was like, "I'm gonna post your sheet." I wonder what in return what she wanted. Yeah, like, I don't know. He's like, he's like, "I don't give a fuck. I'm right on this. I'll post my shitty underwear right now." <laughs> it didn't go. I'm sure it didn't go no, great for him. Uh-uh. Uh, brother in arms. We had a 99 year old man divorce his 96 year old wife after 77 years of marriage because she had an affair. In the 1940s, uh, she just bef- told him now. She, well, he just found out. So shortly before Christmas, Antonio found out his wife identified as Rosa. Whoa, <laughs> has concealed affectionate letters from the past lover dating back to the 1940s. Confronting his wife, she admitted that she indeed engaged in an affair over 60 years ago. The revelation appeared to mark the breaking point of Antonio, who insisted on divorce, concluding their 77 year-long relationship so it was 60 years prior that this took place yeah but they were together so, d- right i get that yeah i mean fuck you live your whole life with someone 90 yeah. something you're oh, like I, I, this I, poor I, why could you just throw the letters could, away uh, throw yeah. them away like why are you hanging on to them still lady that, that's what would hurt the most yeah like you hung on to them because like that that obviously is like your go to cheer up spot, right? You're, you're reading think, them. You're thinking about this not all the time, but you're taking a look at those letters. And then, you know, maybe she finger jams herself. <laughs> I knew that. That's yeah. What, yeah, I mean, but honestly, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, right. She was like, all she's right, she's reflecting on the past. Yeah, Antonio's going to work. Like I'm gonna fucking read these love letters and get all fucking. Almost. Unbothered, yeah. Yeah, dude was probably in like a doo wop group, had a cool haircut. Shout out to Antonio for not sucking that up and laying down a law. Like, see you later, you fucking skeezer. Yeah, you're on the street, hon. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, you wonder when you get to 99 if you're going to, if you're still going to try to find some more crease. <sighs> I, probably not, but like that, if anything's going to put a pep in your step to fuck at 99, it's going to be that. And, and you think with this, like, kind of going viral, he you might think be some able young to find eighty year olds going to be hitting him up. I, I mean, even eighty. I mean, he 85. might get some assi- assisted help. Someone like with an OnlyFans might go blow this dude just to blow her account up. I'm yeah, gonna... I mean that's hor- that's horrible. I feel bad for my guy here, but but no, he's starts getting blown. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, he's <laughs> getting blown. Uh, talk about employee sues after alleged orgy at boozy holiday party. <laughs> Uh, we had a guy, the woman says she, she witnessed a co-worker having sex with his wife, or yeah, has sex, had sex with his wife and kissing another employee at the party uh, before one of them vomited into her guacamole bowl. Uh, so t- talk about after party was getting fucking wild. I never, did you ever work at a fast food place? Yeah, I worked at Orbeez when I was in Halfway House. How was that? Weird. Ah, it, it, we there was no connection with anyone that worked there. It was, yeah, oh, I, I worked there was at no... Panera. It was a bunch of high school kids, so we like well, it was, it That would have been better. It was everybody from older so we were all in high school, and it was just, it wasn't. Yeah, wasn't weird. I I feel like an adult working at a fast food spot together. You're, it's probably gonna get a little weird like this. You're gonna go. You're gonna have a couple of drinks of you know chilies or some shit, I, and next thing you know, people are gang banging your wife, throwing up in the guacamole bowl. Yeah, I yeah, that's fucking pretty insane. I worked at. Actually, another thing about it, I worked on in Florida, A and W root beer. It was uh, they sold like hot dogs and shit. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. in the mall. They had fire hot dogs, and I remember like the one chick. How much root beer did you drink? I, I was I was hammering floats. But the, <laughs> the manager was nineteen, and like I'm down there, like I was being like, the float police. Yeah, no, uh, dude, she was like unlimited floats. It's like if I I would come in and bring a twelve pack in the back, like. No uh, and, beers. Yeah, there was two people there, me and her. And she would like run the front, and as long as the hot dogs came out, no one gave a fuck. <laughs> and like Schuster moved down there, 
and uh, I, I, you know, what? I'm gonna stop this story. You right? can't do that. Yeah. So Why would you say his name? <laughs> well, uh, well, no, this don't matter. It's fucking. 22, yeah, yeah. 20 years statute ago. statute of limitations are up on this. Well, nothing bad happened. We just end up, like, thinking, like, oh, we're going to hang out, you know, and I'm, like, saying it, and, like, we're, like, talking, like, we're, like, trying wait, wait, wait. to... So you had a 19-year-old, like, female manager? Yes. Okay. So She might have been 20. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, so... Or, I know she had a fake ID so she could get me beer. And you I were the only get, two people that worked there. Yeah, like, most times, you know what I mean? How old were you at the time? I, was, I wasn't old enough to... Drink. I was only 20. Okay. So she was had I know she was only nineteen or twenty, but she had a fake ID. Got so you. she would like get beer and then like when she was to move down there, we really need a beer all the time. Yeah, so, like, right. so she's making all these beer runs and like the one, I lived right across the street in an apartment complex. Schuster worked at the A and W with you? No. He was just down <laughs> He's there. hung out. He's yeah. drinking beers at the old A and W. Yeah. He would come by and I'd like fire him a couple dogs, you know, I'm like, that's my man. So the one day after work we're like, You wanna hang out? But she was like um, she said, what are you guys doing? I'm like, no, we're just going to drink and hang out. Like, We don't really know anyone down there. And she was like, yeah, I don't care. And I, I was like, we are walking over, and she like told us our one neighbor, she knew him, and he, he sold ecstasy, and we're like, oh, cool, let's get some. And I, she was just like, I don't really do ecstasy. And we were like, uh, we like pushed a bunch. She was like, yeah, I'm more of like a crack person. Whoa! If, if you've seen her, she wasn't like a dime but she was like come and hang out with us and she was all right enough Florida dude you know what i mean and she smoked crack and we were like oh well we'll get some crack we'll get some crack yeah. and we, you know what i mean fuck eating these hot dogs and drinking these beer you know yeah, what I mean? man. fuck it yeah. fuck these floats so we like put some crack in them so we had to go we had to make sure we had enough beer so we could put the landing gear down when the crack went ran out but like yeah that was that was a wild night that was a wild how night how many beers do you have to like fucking like drink to case. like to like come off the crack, like you're, nice and you're, slow. You're talking, um, and I'm trying to give you an accurate description. Nine natural ices. Nine natural ices. Yeah, that's a lot of crazy amount. No, that's coming down. I mean, throughout the night, we drank. Uh, I'm not kidding. Between the three of us, we drank it l- very close to two cases of beer. Yeah, that's a lot of beers. Yeah, I mean, crack will do it to you. Yeah. It opens your palate up for well, beer. You also had the Guzzler and Juicer. And you, it, and at that time, I was hammering beer. And we were like, you know. Nothing weird ended up having happened. No, like, you just had a good night. So you went back to work like the next day or whatever, and everything was just normal. You guys just had a crack, naturalized night, and yeah, back, then, back day on the whole. You were fucking frying up dogs, dude. So then, like after that, like everything was. But then she stopped letting me drink in the back. I'm like, wait a minute, you were just over our apartment smoking, yeah, smoking crack. crack. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, have, you don't have a leg to stand on here. She was like, oh, I'm gonna end up losing my job. I'm like, who gives a fuck? We make like seven dollars an hour. Is there a cor- I mean, there has to be like corporate. Yeah. So like when it like this corporate coming in and like you're you're slamming beers in the back. I never seen a court anyone come back. The only other dude that worked there was like sort of in the same position. He was like an older version of me. He was just like a total <laughs> a total fucking loser. Had nothing going for him. And we switched shifts and like he never snitched on me because like you know I just fired the empty beer cans in the garbage. Right. I'd cover him up with a couple bat, but like you know you could see someone yeah, back there hammering beers and I smell I reek like alcohol. You know, so they hired a bunch it's of. It's like, hard to hire like, that natty ice smell. It is strong, okay. yeah, and I'm sure that probably didn't help me get any pussy down there either. So, <laughs> smell like natty ice and smoke and crizzle. <laughs> Larry, do you have a video of this buns in basketball? So, whenever you guys sent the link, two of the Twitter links were down. Uh, so there's this buns in basketball tournament, it has to be at Atlanta if I had to guess. They're playing, it's a bunch of chicks, probably strippers, playing in their bras and underwear on like a, it's a hoop court. There's referees, there's probably 300 black dudes. Smashed in like a children's cafeteria, and they were just running a hoop game. Zebra, did you see this? Yeah, I did take a game. <laughs> it reminded me of something, but it, it was like I seen it and I was like, "It, this is insane." I don't know what they're like getting paid to play. There's people throwing money. Like it, it was like a think, total was, strip club element. You know what I was thinking? If the rhino ever like runs out of the cage rage, like maybe maybe this is their next move. It's like you know, like a two on two. Yeah, because they're running five on five in like a children's cafeteria. It's a little tight. Yeah, yeah, but maybe like a two on two, two three on three in your undies hoop game. You know, that's something. That's an avenue they might want to explore. I, I would take a gander at that. Yeah, why would not? You? Right. You yeah, bet the over-under. Yeah, yeah, you could bet <laughs> on it. Uh, there was this dude taking a video. You know, like when dudes sit on. Uh, sit on like the the wood at like a hoop game when they're in the front row yeah and like they'll take a picture of their like feet on the court 
some dude took a picture of his feet on like the children's cafeteria. <laughs> he was sitting front row. Like, he was sitting on the wood. He took a picture, a video of that, and then, like panned up to himself. Like, he was the man, dude, for being front row. Front at row, the at, like the buns. The, what, what was it called? Buns in. Buns and basketball event. And what was it? Was it a fundraiser? Or were they? I could not to... find any information on it. I like it was just a random video on Twitter, and I was like, we gotta, I gotta like, gotta see this. I bet, I bet a thousand dollars. It was twenty five dollars to get in. They made a ton of the killing on that. The girls probably made tips, and I'm sure there's some fun stuff happened afterwards. Yeah, they probably was probably a little donut room or something like that. After right? That. I, yeah. <laughs> no, not wrong with that. Uh, we had an accountant that was getting bullied at work, so he stole $170,000 off his bosses and blew it in one weekend on hookers and cocaine. Holy One fuck. weekend. One weekend. That is what you got to – he had to take a couple of his boys with him. Even in Vegas, dude, hookers and cocaine. Is that where he was? I don't know. I, Anywhere. If you're going to blow one hundred seventy grand, like that's where you got to go. Yeah, he got, in the United States, robbed them. We're, yeah, I mean, I think it, something like this computer. If I had to say what happened, I would say the majority of that money got spent on the hookers, and I would say like one hooker was probably like, yeah, they probably we got it, we got a gold mine here. Like, come on over and like listen, ten grand a night, hang out with us. It, there's five girls there, or probably like six, eight girls there. He ends up spending probably like a hundred and probably fucking fifty thousand on the fucking hookers. Twenty thousand on coke. I mean, that's an insane amount of cocaine. That's an insane amount of coke. And this For, guy looks a little nerd, but he did steal one hundred seventy k and go blow it in one weekend on hookers of cocaine. I would love. He to might talk have found himself him. in a situation uh, like that one movie where, like, with J Lo and the chick from Crazy Rich a- Asians are like strippers, and they like take advantage of the businessmen. You ever see that one? Uh, it's a horrible, horrible movie, but like that's <laughs> that's the premise of it. I can see something like they, they you know, they, they get these businessmen yeah. in their grips and they yeah. like, rob the shit like, They blackmail the them, all kinds of shit. But it's, it's J Lo and the chick from Crazy Rich Asians playing a the, the chick playing a, from Crazy Rich Asians playing like a prostitute really threw me for a loop in that one. It was it was weird. Th- that's just like the, the gotta be the worst come down for this dude because you had a couple days of like probably the best time of your life. Now you're coming down off this like horrible coke bender. You lost your job. You're you're going to jail. You had 170 k. It's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So you you stole 170. I don't know. He's smiling all the way through. It looks that's like. Why you got two and a half years if this person's right. Two and a half years. Ooh, that ain't worth that's it, buddy. Not on a weekend. No. For nah. a weekend. For a weekend. One nah, weekend. Yeah. yeah, that's not good for business, idiot. If let's see, still, still, we'll start a podcast when he gets out and blow up. You know what I mean? Here's the guy that blew 170 grand on coke and hookers in the weekend. Humpback whales are gayer than Meek Mill. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> two whales caught ass pounding each other on camera over the uh, over the weekend. So uh, humpback <laughs> whales are caught uh, a couple buddies hanging out in the ocean. Some asshole jumps in. They're ass pounding. Never caught on camera. Whales are gay, John. What do you think? I know how you feel about the gays. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's like yeah, one of, that's, I mean, I, that's one of those things. Like, oh, let's go ahead here. Dude, like, be, let's like, let's see what these whales are up to. And dude, a, a humpback gray whale is enormous. And like the I, one, the one's just on its side, and the other one's just giving them the fucking. I business. mean, for animals, and whale dicks are crazy. Animals holds a hole, dude. My dog yeah. will hump a male dog. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, what's the difference between us and animals, then, John? So. <laughs> Just say it, Jack. Just come out one day into this podcast. I just love feeding into Mishka. I know. I know. You're driving. I can say I can hear him already tomorrow. (laughs) Dude, I tell Uh, you what. He's definitely fucked the dude, right? Uh, Yeah, 100%. Uh, But yeah, that wasn't the headline I was. I was. I was. was, I'm kind of agreeing with you. I was kind of thought the hole was a hole with an animal and like they kind of. Like you said, my dog will stick his dick in, and, like, in anything. They'll hop anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, he'll go sniff the other dog. There'll be a dick there. He don't care. Lick it. The, yeah. I mean, here's the, the thing. I like, Maybe I have so a like, gay did, dog. Like, could you no, see? You have a gay dog. I think I do. So the, so the, dog, so the whale that was ponding the other male whale, like, I guess whales have like a, like a pretty yeah, big. They have huge dicks. So, right? so they seen like this giant whale dick yeah. on the other one. Like, yeah. oh, that's a shithole. Like, here comes, yeah, here comes old big I mean, dick Rocco like, again. horses don't fucking... Fuck, I don't think they're, you know, that's probably all. Are horses gay? No, not really. I don't think there's, like, much video of, I mean, yeah. I guess a horse will, I mean, they'll fuck a person if it, like. Down in Mexico. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think if a horse gets a boner, they'll probably put that fucking yeah, horse guess, dick anywhere. Yeah, right. They, you might a, be right with animals that holes a hole. There, there's a, yeah, down in Mexico, that's a big market, those donkey shows. 
Yeah, uh, I don't think I, I didn't even know what like you were that. talking about when you were like, in Mexico. So that's just something you've seen. Well, you know, after bachelor party, remember bachelor party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the where the mule or the donkey sniffs coke Eating and pills. fucking ODs. Yeah, yeah. has the time of its life. Was gonna bang that chick. You know what I mean? Is that a real thing? And yeah, and if you remember in um, the Godfather too, there was some weird sex. Like it was, it was just a weird fucking scene. Where like they took him to the club, and when he found out that Fredo knew the other dude, he's like, "How'd you know about this place? This is weird." You know what I mean? It wasn't donkeys fucking, but they do have weird sex shows down there. Yeah, I never been to a weird sex show. I know uh, one of our friends been to a cockfight before. It's yeah. not the same, but yeah, I don't but, think I, I don't think I'd be interested in that either. I think that was in Mexico too. Yeah, was it? Oh, the, oh like where the the chickens are fighting? Yeah, the spurs. Yeah, they're. Yeah, they're <laughs> you can uh, bet. That's big gambling. It is. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'd want to watch anything to the death. I'm not an animal guy. I'm I'm an animal guy to the point where I don't. I wouldn't enjoy that. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's not my thing. Uh, only fans mo- only fans model has rare genetic trait that makes her have a purple vagina. Uh, it's called bait. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I think it's just pounded to death, right? Yeah, that little thing's been. You about she, to whip this thing she, out here, she, Eagle Tits? She, no, she doesn't. Show. She, she doesn't show it. She, she's. I really, thought they were talking about her like pubes at first, but no, it's just the whole, the whole, the whole thing's fucking purple. I mean, uh, we've, we've all seen some vaginas. I mean, once they're broken in, like a little bit, like a catcher's mitt. She's probably renting that thing out like an Airbnb, and I mean, she's probably got a lot of dickles going in there. Like, it's probably got some work put in, some miles on it, huh? I, I you don't think th- you think it got that way. It wasn't. She, no, wasn't she, might have, she might have genetically had a, a busted up pussy, and then like over time, it just got smashed more and more and more. I mean, she's an OnlyFans mom. I'm sure she's taken down some like some great big league chews. Yeah, just smashed in. I I never I don't know is if it's like a different kind of like I'm thinking of like a softer purple where it just looks like you know what I mean. Like yeah, this seems like they make it seem like it's a deeper like dark like re- like like a beaten in like purple. Right, like some now, blo- maybe some broken like blood vessels. Now, th- now yeah, well, I could be totally wrong. It, it could be like you know, obviously. Some- now, if we're talking like a magenta or something like that, is that, that like a, like that's like a bright purple, like a lavender, like, yeah, a nice lavender. Like that'd be something to see. There was a nice like like if a- we're talking like a deep like dark purple. Like right, okay, that's what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah, with, with like and it's an Audi. You know, what I mean, if it's a nice any, <laughs> you know, what I mean. It's purple, I believe. It's got to be. Yeah, an eighty. Yeah, any purple. That'd be that'd be that'd something. Be, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that'd be that'd be something. Maybe you pay ninety nine nine ninety nine a month to like take a peek at. But yeah, uh, yeah. But old beat up pussy. Everyone's seen one of them. Right. And that's the thing. Like, how many people were like, I want to see a purple pussy to see what this is about, and then went on there and we're like, wait, it's just a smashed up coat. It's just a whore. It, she's just a yeah. freaking. <laughs> she's just a freaking who whore, as Anthony Shirley would say. There's auto and sons landscaping, big enough to serve, small enough to care. They offer landscaping, pressure washing, snow removal, gardening, lawn maintenance, sod lawns, complete insulation, shrub maintenance, retaining walls, complete spraying services, and more. They put in the work so you don't have to. Transform your yard today and call Rosado and Sons Landscaping at 412-521-9045. Tell them Z-Bird sent you and get a special discount. Need the move? Call Miracle Movers, 412-419-2620. They're a team of experienced and professional movers dedicated to providing clients with the best possible service. They will work with you to create a custom moving plan that fits your specific needs and budget. They're also fully bonded and insured. So give Miracle Movers a call, 412-419-2620. Having electrical problems? Don't know where to turn? Call Vance Hall at Plug Electric, 412-298-6770, 412-298-6770. That's Vance Hall at Plug Electric. Car problems suck, especially if the problem is too big for you to fix yourself. You don't know where to take your car and you don't know who to trust. Well, let me talk to you about Meineke Car Care, located at 4103 Kennywood Boulevard, West Mifflin. Oil changes, brakes, maintenance, pretty much anything you need is in their wheelhouse. So if you need a hand making your car problems suck less, call Meineke Car Care Center, 412-451-8968. Ask for Arthur, 412-451-8968. Bath Factory and Windows. You dream it, they build it. 412-951-3939. From your bathroom to your windows, transform your home with Bath Factory and Windows. You can also find them at bathfactoryandwindows.com. 412-951-3939.
412-951-3939. Are your steps and sidewalks starting to crack? Do you miss it when they actually look nice and clean? Call Giuseppe and Sons. They handle repairs and replacements. 412-421-6711. These are the guys you can trust to help you with all your masonry work in the Pittsburgh area. That's Giuseppe and Sons. 412-421-6711. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield's Finest Podcast. We're about to jump into what's grinding our gears. Johnny, what's grinding them gears? All right. Well, in the great state of South Florida, <laughs> so we get down there, we go to, to breakfast right away, and we probably eat, like, another meal at this place. And, like, the second day, Johanna realizes, like, in the check in South, in South Florida now, they already add in 22% gratuity, which I didn't know about. And, like, they didn't mention it. And like I said, you don't always like. Yeah. Sometimes you just right. get the bill, like yeah, whatever. Got it, caught slipping twice. Twice with like so basically like fifty percent tip. Pretty almost. close, yeah. yeah. But yeah. then the one dude. I mean, I don't, you know, the one dude like came out. He's like, I just wanted to let you know they already add on twenty two percent. He's like, I get sixteen percent of that. I wanted to be honest. A lot of people don't pay attention, and then they get mad. Did he tell you that after the tip or like? No, after he told me before, before I paid the bill. Six twenty two percent. You only get sixteen of that. He says he he said the, I don't know if he's Maybe bullshit he about the that. Cooks he's or gonna some tip shit. The, like the wait the like the other people That's out bullshit. too. Bullshit that they have to tip that out. Yeah, I mean, I feel like places are trying to like push everything they can onto the customer. Yes, there's customer service charges. There's fucking now you're only like. Now your servers are getting sixteen percent of the tip and like five or whatever. Percent on the is bill, going, it says twenty two percent gratuity. It's going to like the so cooks and shit. As far as like I that. know, that's pay your fucking cooks. So if I'm already paying you a twenty two percent tip, like I guess I'll put a couple more dollars on top of it. But like, but why? It's twenty two dollars. Right. Twenty two percent. I'm just. It's like guilt. You feel it guilty. It is guilt. I get. I'm the same boat. But like twenty two percent is a good tip. Right. It's a fit. That's a good tip. Like I, I would. Like it's almost to the point. Like. I like if everything's involved, I, then I don't want to have to tip anybody. That's a, there's a curb your enthusiasm about this. Is there? Larry David loses his mind about it because there was like a there was a tip, and then there was another section to tip, and he's like, "Want to just make it like twenty five percent, and it'll be fucking done with. Make it thirty percent. Just let me know what I need to pay. I don't want to be tipping and doing math and doing all this shit because, but they're just confusing people and they're catching people slipping and the, if their people are leaving forty. Five percent tips right. on vacation. Like I said, yeah. Like, and I guess, like, yeah, it's my fault for not like auditing the bill, but yeah, that's usually Johanna's job. Well, yeah, yeah. We well, we brought up on here several times about like, like I feel like there's a lot of tip jars in like inappropriate places. Like, I'll be honest, like one place I don't mind tipping is when I get a coffee. So I'm like, all right, if it's there, you know, what I mean, like, I don't want nothing that crazy, but like, you get a basic black coffee. But you're like, I'm like looking because I always like, hey, put like a little scoop of ice in, just a little bit, and like they do, and they take their time. I'm like, all right, I, I don't mind throwing a buck in there. But like, that's similar to a bartender. They're making a drink. They're doing right, something right. for you. It's but hard, that, and then like. But then you go to like a subway, and like now they're asking nah, for a yeah, get it. I was just gonna you know, say, the subways, if they, you know. If they do put your it, sandwich together nice. nice, I don't know. Them. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, I mean, it's I'm kind indifferent of, on it. Like sometimes I'm like, all right, I'll give you a couple bucks. Other times, like, what are you right? Fucking like yeah, at the pizza shop. Like, all right, I mean, I just got the pizza. It was pretty expensive. Don't but get me started. I, yeah, I guess we'll give you a couple more. What do you think three three larges at Minio's was this week? Anything on it? To one plane, two peps. Eight, $75. You're seventy to eighty dollars. Seventy six dollars. Yep. Gave me here, or it was it was seventy five fifty. I had eighty. To yeah. Keep the change. It's crazy. Three pieces out, out the door. Just Give pepperoni. Me a, I love minios. It was unbelievable, but like that's fucking banana land. Yeah. What are we doing here? Right. And that, like you said here, keep the change. Yeah. Right you now you're eighty animal. bucks to like fucking yeah. for three pizzas, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. You get into crazy like dude with your kids like. Like one of mine, like don't really want pizza. She wants, a, you know, chicken tenders. Okay, then we get the breadsticks. And yeah, then, you're. Actually, you know, you're like ninety four dollars. Jeez. Yeah, for what? Yeah. Nuts. Uh Yeah, the tip. The tips get tricky. Zebra, what do you got? <laughs> I, I was. I'm gonna leave the one thing alone. Come back to me in a second. I was like gonna talk about what happened right before I got here, but I was like, you don't want to incriminate yourself. I incriminate myself for what? I don't know. You tell you tell me what happened. Uh, fucking, I'm driving here, and like, dude, I'm I drive carefully, like I do. I'm never on my phone, never nothing, and like, literally, this guy's in front of me driving very normal. And this fucking asshole comes over because he's trying to jump the lane because of the penguin traffic and cuts this fucking dude off. And this dude has to slam on his brakes, and I had to slam on mine. Did you see what kind of car the lane jumper had? 
Yeah, it was a fucking, sh- it was a charger with a stripe. Uh, I had some dick bag and a little yellow shithole thing fucking with a big fender on the back. Cut me the fuck off today. I went bananas on him. I chased him for a little bit. Did you? Yeah. It was weird because today I seen two other psychos I driving. Wrecked there. I almost got fucked up. I-, I seen two other psychos driving. We were coming back from Wexford. We were coming back from Wexford doing his job. This Beamer, like, he had like a death wish. Like, he literally flew from the right lane in between all the way to the left and, like, missed two cars by, like, so this a dick, foot. dickhead did. It was fucking coming off the Millville exit, going on the 28, like, towards, like, the Strip District. There's, like, a, it's during, like, rush hour. That fucking, that, like, intersection there or whatever there is, like, the fucking, the, what's it called? The get on, whatever the fuck that on is. On ramp. The on ramp. It's fucking crazy. And, like, if you don't time it right, like, you're, you have to, like, completely stop. So, like, I had to stop because there was cars whizzing by. I get out there, this fucking little yellow fucking Mitsubishi fucking thing comes around me and fucking, for what, dude? He almost fucking crushed the dude uh, that was in front of me, almost fucking made me swerve in the other lane. And yeah, I was hot for a minute. I fucking trying to chase him down. Dude, v- my cousin Paul texted me when he was here because he works with me, too. He got in a wreck probably, like, a little bit behind where you wrecked. The rain, that oh, rain 376. got goofy. Yeah. The rain got goofy, but he said the same thing happened. A dude hit his brakes in front of him. He swerved and hit another car. So his shit got real fucked up. And, dude, my sister got rear-ended the other day, too. It's like, I don't know if people are just nuts or there's just nobody patrolling, like, the roads, and people are just like, it's just, like... Or it's the phones. I, I don't yeah, know what it is, dude. But everything you I, don't see pull, people pull it over too often nah. anymore. I I swear to God, I feel like a, like a majority of the bullshit that happens is from these two things: speed demons and fucking uh, phones. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and it's like everybody's on their phone because you control the music from like on your phone and shit like that too. It's just like so. I mean, right? You're on it. Uh, I got a gear grinder. We're opening a bar down in Lawrenceville, Butler Street. In the back there, it's, like, wide open. We're building a patio. It, we have somebody coming, coming up to the garage door, taking a piss and leaving pissy toilet paper by the garage door, like, two two times a week. It's fucking disgusting. It, like, so, a, it's a man? I don't know what it is. This could be a chick. It could be it's probably uh, a it chick. could be a little bit of both. If Who it's knows? Toilet paper with piss. What, yeah, what's yeah, he doing? Right. Wiping his dick. I don't know if someone's back there like sucking dick and like they're cleaning up or like yeah, cameras what's back there. Yet? Not yet. We are like we're now we're getting. We're, I mean, we're always going to get them, but like it's kind of who's on cleanup detail. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were hammering like where Shuli was working for like a minute. Now they were like staying like towards the sidewalk. Shuli would bitch about it. I'm like I don't know. That could be anything. And like I thought he was like kind of crazy because like. You know, sure. Someone's. Why would anybody do that? Now they're literally coming up to like the glass window. They're just getting like, closer, dude. They're, they couldn't. They be, walk on the patio. P. They're on. They're they're almost in the bar. Like it's a garage door, and that's it. And it's just fucking soaking wet piss toilet paper. And like and you know, it's piss because it's yellow as hell. And it's just like, dude, what the fuck is going on here? I'm like, is somebody like trying to send us a message? Like, what what's happening? That- what, what kind of sicko do you have to be? And it's not like. I mean, you're wrong. It's dark back there at night, so like you're you're not gonna get caught. But like, it's not. I don't know. It's just not. It's it's so weird and out of the way, and like I just don't understand what's going on there at night now. Is there homeless over there? Not. Re- I mean, no, a not really. There gotta, there's, be, some, there's there's like, gotta be some vagrants. There's yeah. some yeah. some vagrants. That's all I'm saying. Some ta- it, some. It, uh, there's some vagabonds, uh, but like dude, some of that old Lawrenceville. Yeah, shit. that old Lawrenceville dude. Yeah, they're coming out of the cemetery. I don't know if they're just getting all. I don't know what's happening, dude. It, it has me baffled. And we just like, and like, uh, there's a pile of piss toilet paper just like sitting in the middle of our patio right now, and it was so wet like today. Like I was, I was I'm not. This is just you sitting need, here. You need like a little handheld leaf blower to blow that baby in the alley. Yeah, yeah dude, it's fucking disgusting. Yeah, man. that's what you gotta do. We got a real. You got like floodlights back there. Like if somebody comes, like any, we don't have anything yet. That's your friend. Yeah. yeah. That and the camera, and you'll, you'll catch the, the piss. I was thinking maybe just get, like, a sign, like, we're watching you or something like that, or you're on camera. To try to, yeah. But I don't I, If you're the type of person to do that, I don't think you really give a fuck. No, you might be. They, they might, might be, be part of the game. It. Yeah, might they be part of the game. Is there any homeless there? You just asked that, John. He losing your mind? No, did I ask for his homeless? No, I did. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, not, no, not, not like a ton, no. But I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there are here and there, like, down by the river, but we're pretty far from the river. Yeah. 
don't know. I don't know. It's fucking strange. It's creeping me out. Yeah, fuck yeah, it would creep me out. It's just a rain tonight, man. I'll wash that shit That's away. what I'm kind of hoping on, but it's fucking gross. Like, it was a... Nice new They're patio. using a lot of toilet paper, too. Like, I, well, I don't know what's happening. I thought someone, like, at first, I was like, maybe someone's back here turning tricks, like, because it is... I don't... Like, uh, But the but, like, toilet paper, yellow it's piss, toilet... It's piss. It's piss. It's thousand percent piss, too, so, like... I don't know if they're turning tricks and taking a piss and so looking at a UTI, but like to have toilet paper on you like that, like I don't know what the fuck's going I, on. I I think I so now that I'm like breaking it down, I'm analogy is 100. percent It's a woman going up there taking a piss, wiping her pussy, throwing the toilet paper at her. Is it kind of secluded? It's kind of secluded, but like there's so many other. It's I get yeah, yeah sure, but like it just it's kind of out of the way too, like. People weren't like sleeping on Butler Street. Like if the the homeless are down like by drunk the river. People come out of a bar that like only has one bathroom or something. But, like not around us. No, right, I don't no, know. it doesn't make fucking I'm sense. I'm baffled. Yeah, like it's just like I don't know. It we'll might be to... time for a stakeout. It might be time for a stakeout. <laughs> That'd be fun, actually. That would be fun. Wait, wouldn't it be funny if it ended up being like eagle tits? Oh, uh, <laughs> dude. We're on to you, eagle tits. <laughs> you sick freak. Our luck, we'd be fucking sit out there all night for a big Greenfield's Finest podcast stakeout, and no one would come. We'd just be like, we'd have to like, we'd have to like frame somebody pissing and just like fake like. We'd have to give Kenny thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It'd be like, don't do whatever you got to do. Do whatever. Call me. <laughs> well, get me back on the show. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a piss. Who gives a shit? Yeah, are you yeah. like beefing with your neighbors? No, no, I don't think it. The, the, I guess our, the neighbors wouldn't do that. Our neighbors, yeah, our neighbors, like, yeah, no, nothing like that. They're not the type of people to. Wait for it gets too dark outside and have a huge piss. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of shitty neighbors, dude, I actually, I finally got that zoning and license. Yeah, they fucking appealed it. He won the, the case did. and then they yeah. appealed it. So what I gotta go. F- so like, the, really, I don't know what like other. Does he have to come? I I think so. I think I, I, the dude was like, I was like, should I come? He's like, I recommend you come because anything like if you want to like, I'm like, Defend all right, yourself. I guess I'll go. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna not go because like this is like the final sound. Yeah, if that dude shows up and you're not like, there, like dude, I, like what what else are you gonna say? Like what right. else, like they city granted it, but get a life, you fucking loser. Dude, no, no, that's not. Yep. Whether a recent storm has damaged your home's gutter system or your roof requires an update, at Allen Construction they are equipped with the tools and skills to accomplish any job you throw their way. Roofing, windows, siding, soffit and fascia, gutters and spouts. You won't regret calling Allen Construction. 412-954-8337 or visit allenconstructionpgh.com that's a l a n constructionpgh.com Schaefer Inc's primary goal is to deliver unbeatable quality for all your construction needs. They aim firstly to be a company that is principle driven and achieve this by valuing the importance of ethical business practices, creating exceptional relationships with both customers and employees. Their high standards derive from a focus to detail and a priority on their reputation. So give them a call at 412 915 1694. 412 915 1694. Need a new retaining wall? Call Just Walls, 412-889-4401. They're fully insured and are the guys for the job. That's Just Walls, 412-889-4401. Need help with roofing, siding, gutters, downspouts, or soffit and fascia? You should talk to SNL or Modeling LLC, 412-628-9717, 412-628-9717, and tell them GFP sent you. Capizzuto's Pizza, 422 Greenfield Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA. Do you like pizza? Of course you do. Capizzuto's has everything you need. Check out their food by Googling Capizzuto's Pizza Pittsburgh and click on their menu. You won't regret it. You know them. You love them. They have been serving the area for over 28 years. Greater Pit Tree Service. They offer tree and shrub trimming, pruning, and removal. Have a tree that looks like it could be a problem? They'll come by and access the situation. Schedule your service today, 412-312-4651. Want to learn more? Check out their website, greaterpittreeservicepa.com. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield Smiles Podcast. Thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget about the comedy show up at Score Hill Sports Bar, April 5th. Tickets available on Eventbrite. Grab your tickets. Hope to see you there. All right. Looks like we're about to jump into what will Greenfield do. What will Greenfield do? Whoop, whoop. Uh, this is a screenshot I've seen. It was from a Venmo. Uh, it's It was a text message to an unknown number. So they accidentally sent $5,000 to the wrong person on Venmo. And they finally, you know, they 
got their number. Yeah. You know, obviously, if you send it, you have to have like a number. You he text them like, "Hey, I accidentally sent you five thousand dollars. Can you send it back?" What are you doing if you get that five thousand dollars in your Venmo and then you get that text? I, I'm I'm being completely honest because I deal so much with with Venmo and shit, and I, I would send it back. Man. I think I would probably that's send it back. That's too. It's bad, bad karma. And, and not only that, five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Fuck ton of money. Do they have much, any recourse too much to, money to like? To, I, if can, you send friends and family, no. If you send goods and services, yes. So, so on on Venmo, PayPal, all those apps, you have the option of paying. You know, send five thousand dollars friends and family, and it just you know they get it the whole five grand. They have to pay a fee, a small fee, but they'll get the five grand. If it's goods and services, you have to like usually like you're buying a good from across the country or something like that. They have to enter a tracking number, everything like that. So that recourse, like yeah, but if you were sending someone five grand, like it was like for something like I, I don't know, I don't know how the fuck you could send the wrong person five grand because they, if you're sending it to a number that you don't know, you literally have to enter their last four digits to their phone number. Like, like they won't just let you automatically send right. it. Right. So, I, I, it's to me, it's, like, baffling, like, how this happened. It's too much money to send, like, Venmo. I, I would, I mean, yeah, I, I would definitely 100% of, like, if it was someone I was, like, buying something off of, like, I, I would call them, I, I would say, send me a screenshot of your Venmo, you know what I mean? Like, I need to see it, everything. You like Venmo it. request me. Yes, and then I'll I'll send you the shit. And, and like to me, this sounds like it was like a. What are you doing, Johnny? You keeping that five grand at this point in my life? No, I even my other points in my life. No, but I could see how you can get screwed on it. You send it to us, somebody you don't know. If you're down and out, and all of a sudden you have five thousand dollars, dude. I, you, yeah, you, you might hit that block. Like, and you know like, what? I'll take that five thousand. We get a new cell phone. See ya. Yeah. Change what are, your what are you gonna do? Del- delete. Yeah. Well, you don't even know where this dude lives, and it's not, you don't even know what the names are. I mean, you could. It, like easily here's the one thing though like your venmo if that person sucked the money out immediately it, it goes to your bank account so they, they could dispute it and be like hey i accidentally said but like you said if you like immediately block them delete your venmo account get you know, it in your bank account delete it five grand's enough uh, enough money gr- enough money for uh, it's enough to money switch to banks get a new bank yeah, yeah switch banks there you go and then you're fucking beat like i if it was I hate to say right, it. Right, if you're going to get nothing to lose, and that five grand's a nice come up, you're taking yeah, the money. Yeah, if you and I'm Schuster a, are down in Florida smoking yeah. crack, making A&W floats. I, I, I would have I said, see you. <laughs> How yeah. fast would that five grand be gone? Oh, dude. It There'd be, be nothing left of it. That yeah. A&W would be burned to the ground. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, dude, I'll tell you what, though. We had hot dogs for days. <laughs> for How many dinner. glizzies did Schuster t- eat at a sitting? Dude, shoot, the, the one day we were shit-faced drunk, and I literally, I would, I would steal... They had like twenty packs of Nathan's hot dogs. Oh man! You know what I mean. And then we had like Schuster was like, "Babe, you know what I mean? Won't you like? You know, like at one time you made me them dogs. You like deep fried them, and then you brought them over. He's like, dude, I want a deep fried dog. I say, like, how many you want? He said, I don't know. I was like, dude, I'll deep fry the whole fucking bag. So I deep fried twenty glizzies. I brought buns, condiments, <laughs> everything over, dude. By the end of that drinking session, there was three glizzies left. Oh. What did you, was your stomach the next day, dude? I was probably I I didn't care at the time because this was like yeah. my my only nutrition was coming from I I Nathan's a good new beer floats and glazes. Yeah. I was like I want things weren't going great. At that yeah, point, so my, you don't care how many glizzies you're putting down. Uh, I was fucking sucking glizzies like there was no tomorrow. But I I probably they were good sized glizzies. So I, yeah, Nathan's uh, are big. I, I like over the span of natural like, casing. No, no. Oh. No, but they, but, but something about, I That's don't know Schmitz. why more business doesn't do this. A deep fried hot dog is fucking, it's pretty probably, good. It's so fire. But, like, I, uh, health wise now, like, society. Yeah, it'll kill you. But, you know, but, but one deep fried glizzy. Every once in a while, everything I, in I moderation. I fried my, the dogs at the house now. Do you? Yeah. How do they you, eat lot, you eat a lot of house dogs? I mean, it's an easy meal for the kids. And yeah. every so often, it's an easy meal for me. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot. What's your go-to dog? What do you mean? What do I put on it? No, you're what, what brand. I like you, Schmidt. You do. That's right. You're you're the. I, I remember you telling me that. I mean, I like Nathan's too, but Schmidt, like that natural casing dog, got that, got that guy. snap. Yeah, I like the Hebrew Nationals. I think I think the Hebrew National got me. Like people always talked about, it, and then the being at Costco. Yeah, is that where, well? They sell Nathan's at Costco too, right? They do, but they got the Hebrew National. Yeah, they do. Yeah, like, they I have to ballpark Franks too. I dude, when I was it's a, a good Frank, my mom would buy like 
the most generic hot dogs growing up. And like when I got older, I went over to people's houses that had like real hot dogs. And I'm like, these taste so much better than the ones my mom buys. They were like literally in a white package that said hot yeah. dogs. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know exactly. They were all watery. Dude, uh, I hate She boiled them. Or boiled them, but dude, sometimes they're in the microwave. I've microwaved and the they dog would, before. They would split. Oh, oh. dude. Desperate times, dude. Good. You're hungry enough. Oh, Growing man. up a poor, dude, it's not fun. Just microwave and dogs. Dude, you get time Stink to... up the whole house. Oh. You just a... got to gotta doctor them puppies up. I had a dog for the first time recently. A long ass house. It was good. Dude, I remember the first, like, it was like, like a, seeing someone with a Snickers ice cream bar in her house, it was risotto, and like risotto. That's big living. And risotto, like, definitely knew that I I had nothing, and like never like, you know what I mean? Like never belittled me for eating like food over his house. Z Bird, not like he came over with sheepish. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, dude, he'd be in your you fridge. Gotta him, you got to eat an ice cream bar. Yeah, right? dude. He, I mean, he might eat like four or five of them. Like, there was like, a, you know, you take then, him down and you're just, all right, dude. You it's know. a lot of ice cream. The fucked up thing is, like, so me and John are hanging out. We're like, fucking, John's coming to Green for all the time. Dude's fucking, we're having a blast. Like, but I'm always over his house because it's just a lot better than my house. But, like, his dad would, like, fucking leave money for pizza. They took care of me, like, every night. One fucking time, John sleeps over my house, and my mom makes breakfast. And John's up, and John's like, oh, dude, your mom's making breakfast for us. I actually wanted to eat over. My mom made bacon, sausage, eggs, and I swear to God she had English muffins. And she's, it was all for her. Oh, that's she ruthless. did a feast. And she couldn't eat. And, and she got two kids in the house. Like, like you know, We're little. We're like 14. Didn't That's even crazy. offer us a slice. Am I lying? Dude, dude, it was like the most beautiful breakfast. Like you could. You think you she was like trying to rub it in? No, I she, think she just was like, "Don't give a fuck." She just hooked <laughs> it up. Like she just was cooking breakfast. Like I'm about to fuck this up. And then me and Zebra come walking around. She's like, "Get your own fucking breakfast, Michael." Yeah. I think we walked down to like Giant Eagle, got a donut and a chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my mom. Dude, I swear to God, it was funny. Like I would. The kids would come out with money. I would ask my mom to go out, and I'm not making this up. I was 15 years old. The one day she gave me a dollar seventy-five. I was like, "Can well, I?" Well, so- uh, fifteen, a dollar seventy-five ain't getting you anywhere. A dollar seventy-five at the pop stand or Jacks back in the day that would get you somewhere. Uh, but I'm talking like fifteen. Yeah, I'm like, crazy. "Hey, we're going to hang out." It was like you were trying to get yourself a pizza bagel and like a, and a, a forty Nick. and a forty. Yeah, right, and a forty. Can I get five? Like, can I get five bucks. Like, when it was like when she got paid, I would get like a five. But when I, f- I found out the trick was to go into yesterday's Friday night when she's hammered up and ask her in front of her friends, and then she could pull the order. That's all they ever asked yeah, for is right. money. That's all they ever asked for. I might, yeah. I might be, she, bitch didn't even give me breakfast the other what day. What would she break you off then? She, like, like a, a dub. dub. And I'd be like, yeah. So, like, I started like And that. then sometimes, like, you would get, like, you know, there could be, like, a, a friend in there. They would give you a couple bucks, too. That, yeah, it was always uh, a... She had some side some side guys, and they'd throw me an extra five or a ten. Yeah. And, like, I remember I caught her the one time hitting the cherry machine, and it was like she <laughs> – actually, let me tell you a story. She won the jackpot at bingo the one night and didn't tell anybody. Like, me or my gr- – my grandma used to pick her up every Sunday night from bingo, hit the jackpot, doesn't tell anyone. I find out the next day from someone like, hey, your mom hit the jackpot. What are we talking, a few hundred bucks? It, it was the time it was three fifty, which was a lot. Like yeah. I'm like that's a lot. So I'm like, I'm like, grandma, did my mom say anything about winning the jackpot? She, I'm like, she 100 percent did. So I called her at work, I'm like, hey, did you win the jackpot at bingo? Oh, Michael, you fucking gotta ask me everything. I want to, yeah, I did. You know what? And I needed money to put towards raising you. And I'm like, sure, fuck, didn't go towards that breakfast. You know what I mean? I'm like, can you break me off a dub? Like you know, and she did, but Ugh. I was like, but if it wasn't for Dave Samuel's mom, I'd have never find out about it. She rat her out. She didn't rat her out. She just thought my mom would have told her kid. <laughs> yeah, right. Her parent like hides from her kid. Hey, I just won three hundred fifty bucks. Oh fuck! All right, we got one more. Now nah, let's get out of here. It's time. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jack's right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Green Plus Five's podcast. Welcome all the new listeners. Uh, we have avail- episodes available every Wednesday at 7 a.m. You can go back and listen to all the old ones. Thanks so much for tuning in. Everyone have a great week. And remember, folks, Greenfield loves you. We're out.